end up getting to the car and she's like what took you so long and i'm just like i shot a deer and she's like you did i said yeah and she's like was it a big one and instantly i start getting emotional i start crying I was like, that's the biggest deer i've ever seen in my life so i turned the The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Deer Grow. Heck yeah, man. Dude, we put a lot of food in the ground every year, you know, seemingly more and more, and uh, we have a ton of fun with it during the off season. Uh, there's some struggles that come with it too, though, right? Obviously, the back of my truck is evidence, you know, right now, it's mm -hmm. a couple of weeks after uh, I jackknifed, you know, a 4,800 pound uh, material spreader, you know, as I was coming down, and it's just it was too much weight for my truck there. But, you know, all those struggles aside, you know, dude, Deer Grill really has been a staple for our food plotting process uh, for several years now. Yes, we like to put lime and fertilizer on the plots, you know, if we can, but there are some that it's just we're not able to get to them or it's not feasible for us to get out of state with that stuff and so deer grow is kind of the, the quick and easy but still super effective option for us to be able to get the most out of those food plots that we can every year yeah, and i mean we're guilty of over analyzing things just like everyone else but that's the best part about deer grow is that it's going to create healthier soils which in turn makes better food plots and the fact is is we can simply spray plot start or plot till when we put the seed in the ground and then when that plant starts to grow we hit it with boost and we know that we walk away when we come back it's going to be a great looking food plot for anybody that's looking to try deer grow if you use the code hunter15 that's h-u-n-t-r-1-5 at checkout for deergrow.com and save 15 percent on any of your deer grow products it's a great way to get started on this and just see what the results are for yourself better food plots bigger deer and we're back hey -o. on our podcast episode 158 in studio guests before we make introductions, though, I'm going to thank you guys for listening, for subscribing. Uh, wherever you're watching YouTube, uh, Apple Podcast, um, Spotify. Spotify. Uh, yeah, we appreciate you guys Question listening. Mark? Give us a follow. Subscribe to our stuff. Um, you know, leave us a comment. We do read that stuff from time to time, and uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in. So we'll jump right into it. So uh, we've got CJ Alexander, Heath Davidson in the studio. Okay. How you doing? How you doing? I don't... I would say Welcome, right guys. now people are saying, Who? <laughs> But who are these guys that are just came into the studio? They picked us up. So there's the an street. owl problem in this uh, <laughs> uh, in the <laughs> office here. Yeah. So um, I don't. I guess maybe CJ people will have recognized you since what November 9th? About yeah, probably more so November 10th. Is that when it leaked out finally? Yeah. That's uh, yeah. That's when it was tagged, and that's okay. Yep. So on the 10th, you recovered it, found the buck. That's when the leak came out. So what we're talking about is CJ killed a gigantic buck. Well, they'll recognize the buck when they see the thumbnail on this Which, video. Frankly, Jared and I have not seen the buck in person yet. Yeah, we wanted Stashed to save in the office back here. We wanted we're, to we're save gonna get that a first for a bit. Here. Yeah, yeah, first lick reaction over the the end of it. But um, you killed probably one of the biggest frame typical bucks that I don't know, probably I've ever seen. Hey, he's all right. Nice little basket rack. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. he uh, see you can jump right on her dude get her right up on the mic um you can slide your chair in here too if you need yeah hold on get up in there beauty yep get up on it but uh yeah originally i have no history with this deer um the property was in my sister's family her grandma bought it in 85 um my dad grew up uh in the ohio area around um Forest Park, Ohio, Cincinnati mm -hmm. area. Um, he's always been a deer hunter, but he's always been a different style of deer hunter than me. He likes that stalking up rain gun type person. Okay. Versus me, I'm bow hunt or nothing at all. But, but I mean, your dad got you into hunting. Um, in part, yes, he got me into guns. He was in law enforcement for 24 years where okay. we grew up in Highland County. Okay. And, uh, he was the head of the SRT team and the sniper there too. So, so guns were his thing. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Um, Don't swallow it. I got. Try you. not to. I appreciate <laughs> you. Sometimes you just need a hand. I got you. But um, a four-fingered hand. <laughs> um. But it was actually my brother-in-law who okay. got me into hunting. Um, about ten years old. Um, him and my sister got married the year before I turned nine. Um, they didn't have a house of their own, so they ended up moving in with us. Mm -hmm. And slowly, I just gained interest in it. 
it started with rabbit hunting because he had a rabbit dog. Cool. And we'd go out to his mom and dad's. He'd run rabbits. We'd uh, do that, shoot clay pigeons, stuff like that. And uh, the next year, he asked me if I want to go out for youth season. And I said, yeah, yeah I'll give it a try. Uh, <laughs> funny story. First time I ever shot a gun, we went out to Tranquility Wildlife Area. I don't know if you guys know where that is. Is that like it, southwest? Ohio? It's close. I think it's in Adams County. Oh, it actually. is. Okay. Yes. And they have a gun range there. And he got a little youth 20-gauge shotgun. <laughs> and I bet you, I watched him shoot three shots in about one minute. And it took me probably 45 minutes to fire one. Absolutely terrified <laughs> yeah. of the gun. He's like, just do it. And it, it ain't going to bite you. It still kicks like a mule as a 20-gauge. Uh, 100%. Um, but, uh. 25, 50 yards. I was all right. Mm -hmm. I was sufficient enough to where I could kill an animal for sure. So um, I call him my Uncle Mike, but it was my dad's really good friend. Uh, he owned about 400 acres in Winchester, which is in Adams County as well. And uh, we went out there. Um, within the first 10 minutes of being on the property, I had shot and missed a little six point. I probably shouldn't say this, but uh, <laughs> the sleeve of my shirt, of my coat, got caught in mm -hmm. the slide and i couldn't get it out and there was does running right there in front of us probably <laughs> 10 yards away and he said come on rack another one rack another one i was like i can't he's like you got to push that little thing i was like no it, it won't do anything <laughs> so he grabs it he racks it out doe runs probably six yards in front of us and he blows her leg off <laughs> so that was my first 10 minutes i see why you're hooked at yeah. this point <laughs> give me that gun yeah. boy yeah. yeah that's it i see i see why you're hooked yeah uh <laughs> but we ended up chasing that thing around that. I started that with a slug gun, too. Did you start with a slug gun? I just shot my first year with a slug gun last week. Yeah. That's what I shot. The first year well, I ever... Well, first buck, anyway. First year I ever killed... I was 12, so it was the first year I could hunt. And uh, I shot a button buck with a slug right between the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not where I was aiming, but that's where I, that's where I ended up hitting it. How, how old are you guys? I'm 21. Uh -huh. I just turned 28. October 26th. 28th. Okay. Yep. How do you guys know each other? Nick, you're no longer the younger, per the youngest person in this room. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Um, like I said, my dad was a detective for uh, 24 years out in Highland County. Um, his dream was always to move to where he originated from, which is Birdstown, Tennessee. My mm -hmm. dad has been going there since he's five years old. He's 60 now. Is that eastern Tennessee? It's almost central and very northern. Right on the Kentucky... Tennessee okay. line, right, you're riding right on the line right there. Very small town, very few people. Maybe it's, 900. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. very, yeah. very. I graduated with 60 people in my graduating class. I think, wow. I think Super small class. My graduating class, I think, was 32. <laughs> Holy <laughs> cow. Versus my graduating classes here in Ohio were 500. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so what else is, trying to think, what, um, what lake you got there right on the, the border of Kentucky and Tennessee? Uh, Dale Hollow Lake. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. One of the best got. bass fishing lakes yep. mm -hmm. in America. World uh, record smallmouths out of that lake. Yep. Yep. And that's where, that's what I was thinking. Okay. I know what area you're in now. Yep. But um, I went to um, high school there my junior year um, in a place called Jamestown, Tennessee. Um, I don't know. A little history lesson for you guys. You ever heard of Alvin C. York? Mm-mm. -hmm. No. Uh, he was some kind of war hero. Now I'm upset that I can't remember this. Um, <laughs> but anyways, he had a big impact in that. And it's like um, they have a big museum there in uh, Palmau, Tennessee. Okay. But I drove an hour and 15 minutes to school every day. Holy cow, man. Just because Birdstown, or they go by counties there, it would be Fentress County School in Jamestown, and Birdstown would be Pickett County. Pickett County wouldn't let me play my junior year of baseball because the credit system is actually different. So it was driving an hour and 15 minutes every day and an hour and 15 minutes home. Just so you can play ball. Yep. So uh, then my senior year, I ended up going to Pickett County, got decent grades there, and decided that's way closer, and I'm not a morning person. And I'm late for everything. So. <laughs> it's cool I can attest early. to that one. The bell's at, like, what, 740? <laughs> yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah, theirs is a little bit different than ours. I don't know how you guys do it here, but in Ohio, I believe it was about 7 o'clock. When class started? That's early. Ours was 741 Hummer and Bell. Yeah, yeah that yeah. sounds that's about us. right. You better be in class by 750. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Yep. But, um, See that, Nick? See that memory? I played football with uh, one of his, um, is it your oldest cousin? Yep. Yeah. So I played football with his oldest cousin, 
And um, after I graduated and everything like that, I went back to Ohio, to the Dayton area, for about two years. And uh, ended up meeting a girl. Um, things happened with that. We ended up splitting up. And then when we split up, I mean, I was living with my oldest brother at the time, but I was like, eh. I just don't want to be around this area so i decided to go back with my mom and dad and uh end up getting linked up with him he's actually seven years yeah seven years younger than me yeah so, <sighs> i'm eight years yeah. younger than jeremy mm-hmm. yeah i'm 30 jeremy's 39 yep that's just Similar. the way the dice rolls sometimes mm-hmm. yeah yep. um he's a pretty rowdy kid i uh, try to kind of not necessarily take him under my wing but <laughs> <laughs> the way I see it is we're on you're like you're like I'm living with my parents why don't you learn from me yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um he uh I've seen a lot of things in him that I've seen in myself when I was younger and I've made a lot of mistakes in my life so my biggest thing is I just want to make an impact on people's lives and just developed a really good friendship and he's turned into an absolutely great man I wouldn't trade he, it for anything brother he comes from very very humble beginnings so so I assume you guys did a bunch of hunting and fishing there in Tennessee then? Uh, not so much deer hunting. We've done some fishing. But Man, property around there is the problem. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really hard to come across any property that's really even yielding any decent bucks. Mm-hmm. The road hunting around there and poaching is ridiculous. Is it in Ohio or in Tennessee? Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay. It's, it's terrible, man. I mean, you're talking... I'm, some of my friends from high school, it, it was just terrible. They they've got caught three or four times. They don't ever get their like just slap it, it, on the slap wrist, slap on the wrist, and get it's sent ba- home. It's bad in a lot of rural areas. Is it, it bad where you guys are at in Ohio too? Uh, I'm not certain. I'm not too familiar areas of Ohio, like in Highland County, um, where my dad worked. There was yeah. five or six roads. They just threw them right through deer highways, some single lane roads, man, mm-hmm. and all night. You could be out there. You could drive out there at 3 in the morning, and I bet you see 20 deer. And you could swing back around an hour later, you'll see 20 different deer. Yeah. So Jeez. those roads, it's, it was to the point it got so bad that when people were calling, they were just like, we just were out there. Yeah. We were just out there 20 we're minutes just ago. out there. There's nothing we can really do. I mean, we'll come look. We'll come check. But That's crazy. But if we don't see somebody dragging a deer. Yeah, what know, are they going to do? What, yeah. And so is your area, is it more pasture and open, or is it mountain type Uh, stuff? It's a little bit of both. There's a lot of farmland. Um, Most people raise cattle in the area that we're in. It used to be a very big tobacco. Yep. A lot of tobacco used to be grown in the area. Mm -hmm. Most people have went and leaned more towards cattle now. Yeah. But really, most of the land is family owned, and it is super hard. To, if you don't know somebody, then you're not getting permission. Then that's just how it is. Or you have to lease a place. Yep. Like the place I hunted since I was like nine years old. Um, I guess it was two years ago. I, I come out of the woods one day, it, right after Thanksgiving. So Big Gun was still open. And I'd come out of the woods and a guy was standing there and he was like, Keith, you know, uh, I hate to tell you, but you're not going to be able to hunt here anymore. Um, somebody's going to be leasing the property out. And I was like, you know, okay. <laughs> so yeah, what are you gonna do? I mean, yeah, you can't, you can't do it. It's anything. everywhere, man. Mm-hmm. It leasing is, it, you know, we we've kind of talked about this around, you know, whether you talk about the baiting or whatever it is, is that more and more people are trying to lease ground to insulate themselves from other hunters, basically. A hundred percent. So it's just gonna keep eating more and more private land up. And you've got people. I mean, I know plenty of people who are leasing ground and they don't even hunt it. They just lease it because they don't want anybody else to hunt it. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that's that's what's really starting to create, you know, such an access issue anywhere in the country. Yep. Um, specifically over in that area, I couldn't tell you an exact distance, but, like, where I'm at in Ohio, Wilmington, mm-hmm. I'm 40 minutes in a, any direction will get me to a decent-sized public land area. So if I can't find any private, I mean— sure. I, I can bounce around. And his example... Not I, even close. I wouldn't be surprised that the closest state ground is probably 70 miles away. It, about two hours. Land wow. between the lakes. Yeah. Yeah, land between the lakes. LBL. Yeah. Which gets pounded. Oh, 100%. <laughs> so, like, oh, yeah. I, I was just looking there at... There are their, some good deer in there, but it gets <clears throat> pounded. Yeah. I was looking at their Facebook page last night, I believe, and a group had killed six different eight-pointers 
in the same day. And I was like, man, just, just let them grow, guys. Yeah. yeah. Like two two year old deer. Yeah. I mean, would probably in the next two years been absolute studs. But mm-hmm. you know, you can't save them all. That's why we need Tennessee go to one buck tag, please. Yes, absolutely. How many can you kill in Tennessee right now? Two. Yeah. But uh, I think it was. I know when I first moved down there, it was actually three. Wow. Yeah. So hmm. it's got three inch spikes. It's getting it. It's getting smart. Hundred yeah. yeah. percent. Yeah. I mean, I know you don't hear about. Well, I guess it was oh, what, a few years ago that kid killed that real wacky one out of Tennessee. Mm-hmm. It was like three hundred inch, non typical. But it's that the standing world record. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Non typical world record. But it had like a. I don't know, 130 inch frame. It just was like right. stickers and Mad. weird stuff. What's, yeah. What's the name on that buck? <sighs> Honestly, I have no Nick, idea. Can you look that up? Just uh, world record archery buck. I believe it's 336 mm-hmm. inches. It's something insane for, like you said, 130 yeah, inch a, frame. I yeah, mean, have frame you guys frame. seen it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen it in person, but yeah. I have seen pictures. I saw of it in and person at ATA. The guy was carrying it around ATA. And yeah. I remember looking at it. I was like, that's not impressive at all. <laughs> I know. No, it's honestly. And I mean, no, no disrespect to his deer, but sure. it's ugly, you know. It, yeah, it is. In, in my opinion, like I would rather have a symmetrical. It's unfortunate rack. looking, yeah. Yeah, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Well, everybody said that um, they were talking about somebody trying to shoot it with like birdshot and velvet, so that it would throw like yeah. all that weird. Kind that sounds about of, right. Wouldn't surprise me, <laughs> yeah. you know. I don't know. Can you pull it up? Yeah, wow. Tucker. That's the one. Just do images up at the top. See, this is why Corey didn't trust there me. There it is. I said 330. That was 312. I remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look at that thing. Isn't that crazy? Weird. I mean, th- isn't, isn't that like a mainframe, like 130s? Yeah. yeah. With just trash everywhere. Weird. Yeah. I would hate to be the person that measures that deer. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine getting that trail camera picture and being like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's crazy. It, yeah. It's like, I don't even know what I would do. Yeah, what am I even looking at there? A shooter, I guess. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I guess that's yeah, really the only thing to think about. <laughs> I mean, that deer is probably not that old. I'd say three, three and a half, right there, maybe four, four, maybe four at the four. oldest. That's yeah, what I was thinking four. Hmm. Huh. Crazy. I mean, what I think is kind of, and Jared and I have got on this topic a while here. Is like obviously with more and more trail cameras and cell cams and leasing and private land, you know. It, the the giant bucks used to be such a rarity yeah like when somebody would kill a giant buck like it made north american whitetail and they're like that's like that's where you saw it or heard it that's the rolling stones of yeah deer hunting you know and now all of a sudden like i mean just even look in ohio in the last two weeks Mm -hmm. i mean uh like the ohio big bucks page where they're posting you know multiple 180 190 class deer like every other day i'm not gonna lie uh since this has happened i've had a lot of people from the area some 200 miles away from me I, hey you think it's this deer do you think this is your deer i was like brother you're 200 miles away from me i don't think it's him but we'll get into the details i mean has anybody come forward with not one trail camera picture. that is mind-blowing dude. absolutely that's not what one because this property's 30 acres yeah it's not big at all not big at do all you know if the surrounding properties are getting hunted Honestly, I don't believe so because... And I bought them. Yeah. <laughs> if, yeah if, if, in the process. <laughs> if so, yeah, they're the only properties in America probably not getting hunted. A hundred percent. This road, um, it's in... Blanchester is what it's by. I'm obviously not going to say the name of the road. No, don't say the name of the road. It's very close to this very small... I wouldn't even call it a town. Uh, not even a village. Um, Midland, Ohio. It's really close to that. Mm-hmm. And on both sides of the ends of this road that it was on, there's nothingness. And what kind of terrain are we talking? I mean, is it like farm country? Um, yes, a lot of bean and corn rotating. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say a lot of woods, but the patches of woods that there are, they are big pieces of timber, mm-hmm. but they are scattered pretty good distances. Like, for example, where I was, I would say that's the two biggest block of woods and what separated it was there was a big bean field Mm -hmm. in between them and then a tree line and then right there on that tree line part of that tree line and up was my sister's property so it was basically just funneled them down that tree line back and forth they would go from big woods to big woods back they had uh and we're talking big woods we're saying like 20 acres 50 (sighs) acres i would say those woods 
I would say each of them are probably 70 to 80 acres. Okay. Maybe a little less. So multiple landowners more. have part of these woods on their property. Absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't call that a big wood lot. That's no. The Ramsey wood is 60 acres. Yeah. 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 And farm, I mean, and that's what I'm trying to get to. And like farm country, that's, you know, not as big as you get, but I mean, you that's see where we're at. Woods, where right? we're at in Illinois, I mean, there's not a section of woods that's bigger than 50 acres probably. Sure. Honestly, for a while. the way you guys describe that property. It sounds the Illinois property very so similar to this small block of woods drainage with some cover another little block of woods absolutely my sister's property it has two ponds on it and um, honestly before my sister just put this house on there and uh, they're just getting ready to move in I think they actually started this last weekend but I bet you the yard and the land hadn't been cut or bush hogged. So since, just since 85 just nasty yes yeah, like big cattail looking like swamp type area oh. crp saplings that's what they love yeah there's a scrape on the tree line where i was set up i was in the corner of one of the wood lots by the ponds but this scrape was probably two foot in diameter i mean it was it, and so you've never hunted time. this property before never I've, your dad did yes back in like the 90s? Yes. <laughs> yep. Before I existed. And I mean, nobody's you, been hunting it since. It's just been. That's what I was going to ask. I mean, do we know if anybody's hunted it? Um, my sister has um, a few uncles, but uh, we have different moms. Mm -hmm. So um, it was her mom's mom who owned this property. Okay. So I believe her sons had been out there, and I believe they've shot deer out there. Um, my dad, back when uh, he was with um, my sister's mom. He went back there and he shot a decent amount of deer back there. Because that's what you were telling me. He said, what, he was shooting like 140 type class deer? Yeah, the best deer my dad ever killed was 140s class. Still back and in the 90s, it, yeah. I mean. Yeah, he said was, back when he started hunting in the 80s and 70s, he said, you'd be lucky to see 10 deer a year. So he said. That's wild. I'll go sit somewhere and I'll see 20 deer. I'll be sending videos. He was like, yep, that's. Mm -hmm. I wish it was like that when I was hunting. That's why I'm not <laughs> out there anymore. It's too cold for that. That's crazy. So, so, okay, so you got this 30-acre piece. Obviously, I would assume just, I mean, it's Ohio, right? We talk about this. There's people hunting around there. That's the most baffling part to me. The fact that nobody's reached out to you blows my mind. And the fact, like, every property that I've come across <laughs> that's, like, not getting hunted is getting hunted. Yeah. I mean, Jared and I just had, like, six of our bucks shot adjacent to us in Illinois, like, all in one day. <laughs> wow. Just pow, pow, pow. I, yeah, drop like, it. right in front of my face. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> like, they're like, you see this? You guys are trying to grow some monarchs. Let me help you out. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, no, so it's, a, you know, but that, it it is a big surprise because it does seem like every property around is either being hunted by someone or has been hunted by someone or is leased by someone who maybe will hunt it, but they're monitoring it with cameras. I would say over on that road, it's a lot of older people. Like I said, they've all owned that land sure. for a very long time. So I would say bow hunting pressure with the exception of you don't know if someone's going back there without right. permission. Right. But I would say gun hunting for sure. But I know, for example, my uh, sister's uncle's they never ran a trail camera. They were just out there to shoot does and stuff like that. I mean, that's how I started too. I sure. didn't I didn't kill my first buck until my ninth or tenth year of hunting. Right. Yeah. That's probably, I was sixteen, I think, when I killed my first bike. Yeah, I think I was twenty. Yeah. Twenty one. Something like that. At a hundred inch eight point. <laughs> On a great property. That'll do. So dumb. <laughs> that's nuts, man. I mean it it is um and we'll dive down into the the rabbit hole a little bit but you know when you think about how much time and jared and i talked about it, in fact when we saw your buck we're like jesus like what the hell <laughs> you know just because you think about how much time and effort and cameras and i mean dude we're we can't get a, a 170 on camera yeah and so you know if if you're cool with it cj um because i thought this as you were explaining this to jared and i because if i guess for a little background right you and Heath watch the podcast. This oh, isn't absolutely. like we yeah. didn't come and poach you guys and say, "Hey, you got to be on our podcast." No. Like this would be. So you guys are familiar with the podcast, which is funny. We were in Kansas. Let's let's bring them out. Can we, can we bring no, them out? No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I'm tired of talking about it. <laughs> I'm not yet. bring them out. Not yet. We, we're going to. I promise. I won't hold you off too much longer. All right. Really, okay. I brought my 150 inch eight point. Left yeah. him at home. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so we were in Kansas and. What did you message him on Facebook? I, I reached out to Jared. Yeah, I sent him a picture which, of the day. Which Jared never even reads Facebook. So how he it was a miracle on that it. I opened that message because I 
I didn't expect you to reach out or like we were coming back from picking like up that. day beers is what we were doing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we, we were, were we were at the beer distributor. We were at the gas station coming back. We just had seen a we, 178 point. The guy's like, hey, you want to see a big buck? I was like, damn straight I do, because I haven't seen shit. <laughs> <laughs> we had seen the buck. I don't remember where, but we- That was, was on social. Somewhere post, and we were, we were gawking over to camp. Like We were like, oh, like, cow, it's a freaking giant, you know? And, and then, uh, yeah, I was like, we were driving to get beer, so I was like, dude, you're not going to believe they just wrote me. And I was like, and I was like- I was reading the messages from from you. <laughs> you got a tightener. You yeah. got it. Yeah. So you you're reading the messages and it was like what? Like what are the <laughs> I know I can't believe it. this. And so yeah. So then we you called them. Yep. And we were just sitting outside. It was eighty degrees anyways. We we're just gonna drink beer till the evening hunt. What's and uh, it was it was funny because we got into your story. So before this comes out, I just I want CJ to, if you're cool with it, talk a little bit about like your personal background because yep. I think there's some. Um, like, I'm not going to get into the full divine intervention here, but if people hear kind of what kind of preluded this hunt, I don't know, dude. Uh, there's some weird shit that adds up that it's like, that's about as stars align, deserved, I don't know what you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, they're a miracle pretty much. Isn't that crazy? Probably. Like, I mean, first of all, we just laid it out. No cameras, no history on the property, 30 acres. Like, you just go out. So before, before we get into that, so... The past year, right? Yep. You've been kind of working and helping your parents out in Tennessee. Absolutely. Um, so when my dad retired, we bought a house. It was probably like a thousand square foot. And um, my dad didn't get very much. I'm the youngest of six kids. So when I was growing up, it was everybody was sharing a bedroom. My mom didn't work. She stayed at home, took mm -hmm. care of the kids while dad went and did his thing. Um so we weren't, I wouldn't say we were poor by any means. Um, dad worked his ass off and gave us the best he could. Mm -hmm. Some of my siblings, I wish they would realize that a little bit more, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, we moved down there. We lived in that house for probably four or five years. And my mom got connected with this um, woman. She used to be a traveling nurse. And um, she married a guy from the area of Birdstown, and they built a house right down the road from us mm -hmm. in 2012. Well, um, he ended up passing away, and she has a 1,000-acre horse farm in Alabama. So she ended up loading up and going to Alabama. And this house, I would say it's seven, I think it's seven bedroom, three bath. Holy gee. I mean, it's, an a, it's a gorgeous place. It's a monster house, for sure. Um and it was sitting vacant for a while. It actually had sat vacant so long, and um, the upflush in the basement, mm -hmm. completely finished bathroom. I mean, absolutely gorgeous, but yeah. unusable. I yeah. Mean, so I believe the way it was worked out, she got a certain percentage of the estate each year. So she talked to my mom, said, Tammy, why don't you come move in there? You can sell that place. That'll kind of get Steve's retirement back a little bit. Mm -hmm. You guys just pay the land taxes, water, electric, do a little bit of upkeep and stuff like that, and we're good. So they were like, all right. And um, actually right beside it, there's a five-acre piece. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather, my mom's dad, um, he lived in Goshen slash Milford area. He was an EMT there for 30, 35 years, something like that. Um, he was starting to get kind of sick and stuff. Um, he didn't tell us that, but once he moved – from his place in Goshen and got down there with us, it was just like reoccurring, like thing after thing, like his red yeah. blood cells weren't um, reproducing and stuff. So he would have to go get a blood transfusion and stuff yeah. every week. But um, he ended up buying that property from her for a pretty good price. I think he paid 15,000 for five acres and where it's at, um, they're in the center road and there's another outside road and another outside road and there's our lake view i mean it's basically out on an island gotcha but uh he decided to buy that just to have he decided man maybe i'll build a house over there they can live over here mm -hmm. we can have a little bit of privacy back and forth well uh about a year and a half ago barb ended up getting the rest of the estate and she said you guys have 30 days to get out of the house what yeah mm -hmm. and my mom was like we like we can't do anything like we don't have the money to buy a place we have nowhere to go and she said that's not my problem yeah damn so, so my uh grandpa luckily is very intelligent with money always been really good 
about saving stuff, building his credit, things like that. And he decided, let's go get a loan and let's have let's have a place built. So uh, he went and got a loan for close to 200000 And um, the original idea was to hire people to build these houses. And this would be on the five acres that he right, bought? Right beside where they're at right now. Yep. yep. And uh, so they started doing that. Um, I had just got a job probably two months before all of that. I was working in a factory, all right job, making all right money, which I have four kids. So I was just trying to do what I could do until I figure out something I want to pursue. And um, they find some builders and stuff. They have these concrete pads poured for these houses. And uh, they started with mom and dad's barn dominium first. Mm -hmm. And it was two gentlemen in their 50s. And they would show up for like an hour and a half a day and do some work, set a post, and then get out of there. Once. Come back in three days. It's freaking Amish put that thing up in a day. Oh, uh, have it framed, <laughs> dried in, ready to go. Absolutely. So uh, they started that process probably <sighs> July, July slash September of last year. I'd okay. say is when they started it. Um, by November, they hadn't even had the frame done to the barn dominium yet. And Grandpa's stick built house was just still a concrete pad. And they gave him $20,000 up front. Well, the dude came in and asked my grandpa. He said, hey, man, I need more money. And my grandpa said, look, I used to do this on the side. Yeah, like, you the numbers ain't adding up. Yeah, you haven't done $20,000 worth of work. I understand you have to pay your help and everything like that. I'm not trying to be a dick about it, but yeah, like I got to see more production. Sure. And uh, the dude basically said, screw y'all. I'm out of here. I won't come back. So he left. And uh, they were considering... Um, hiring another person to come out there and build it, but just with financials and the way the market and stuff is nowadays, everything's so expensive. Yeah. And originally, the bank did not even know that there was going to be two houses. They right. only they thought there was going to be one won. because they were like hundred ninety thousand dollars. That's yeah. barely going to build one house, let alone two. Right. Mm -hmm. Let alone a barn dominium. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my mom ended up calling me and talking to me about it. And uh, my dad's built a few houses in his day. That's actually what he did before he was a sheriff. Before deputy. he was a sheriff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's actually a Bass Pro Shop um, right there near Fairfield, Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And dad had a huge part in that. He was actually the last person that went through it and did the punch punch list for everything to make oh, sure that's everything cool. was good. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even know that. So uh, dad's getting a little older. Uh, he's not in the best shape especially since he retired. He was always on the go, on the go, on the go. And mm -hmm. when he retired, it was... Shut it down. Yeah, you'd be lucky to see him come out of the room once a week sometimes. I mean, when he was still allowed coming over to the house, we'd be sitting in the room. we go out, do stuff. Never seen him. Door always shut, just sitting there. Mm. I think it depressed him, honestly. But uh, Happens to a lot of people that retire that, that they kind of lose their purpose and stuff. Absolutely. Don't know what to do with themselves. Yeah, I mean, they had a routine every day. Get up, 100%. go do this. Yep, every, and then it just stops. I think a lot of it is he started to realize he was getting older, and he couldn't work the way he wanted to work. Not to say he's a bad worker now, but mm -hmm. it just puts, oh, I, puts him under a little bit longer than it used to. I get it. <laughs> so, My dad's the same way. Um. She said, there's no way your dad can do this by himself. And my other brothers and sisters, they all have, for the most part, they all but one of my older brothers has kids and has had wives or has wives, mm -hmm. husbands, etc. So uh, they just have no capability of doing it. And me and my fiance talked about it. And I mean, we both, both weren't crazy about the idea because we actually started a long distance relationship i was still in tennessee and she's from where we grew up mm -hmm. and um we just started talking i finally got to the point where i was comfortable on my own things were going good and then boom our paths hit but we talked about it and i was like listen no one else will do it and i'm not leaving my parents without a house to live they did everything they could in their power i'm not saying they were perfect but who is yep so we decided that's what we were going to do. They paid someone to go ahead and finish the frame of the barn dominium and metal it. And then I got down there and me and dad started working on the framing. We had the inside of it framed. 
four days, which mm-hmm. is not, not a very huge, long. No, it's not a huge barn dominium. It's sure about 950 square foot, but it's got a half loft in it. So really gotcha. it's about like 1250, yep. 1300, somewhere yep. in there. So, uh, then we decided to start on grandpa's framing the outside walls. And, uh, we actually started that February 9th, I think of this year. And right now we have it all up, all the outside walls, metal, hung trusses, all the inside framed, um, all the rough end plumbing, stuff like that. It's ready for electric, um, finished plumbing, insulation, and then we're going to start drywall. So we're getting there. But but that's been your year. Yes. And Plus. this whole year, my only agreement and like the car I'm currently driving is uh, one of my older brothers who lived in New York. <clears throat> And uh, he's bounced around all over Arizona, New York, Colorado, Ohio, Louisville, Kentucky, stuff like that. He's mm-hmm. just a roamer. But uh, he said, hey, I got this car. I heard your car just blew a head gasket. He said, it's $390 a month. It's 2017. Gets 40 miles a gallon. He said, you could use it. He said, I don't want it. I'm going to ride subways. I'm going to get Ubers. I'm going to walk in Colorado. That's just lifestyle I like living. So we did that probably right as I got that job so i told my grandpa i said look just pay my car payment like that's that's all i care about and my fiance being the rock star that she is has been working taking care of the kids and holding it down for us and um, it ain't easy oh it's it is not we have a eight-year-old girl a five-year-old boy a three-year-old boy and a two-year-old boy <laughs> so the Where, ball- where's your family living in the meantime um we actually live in an apartment in wilmington so okay so you guys are renting right now. yes absolutely <clears throat> and uh i told him the car payment if they want to throw me cash here and there that's fine like if i'm going back to ohio because obviously i'm not going to stay gone away from my family sure. and my kids for a whole year uh, i couldn't do that um so they would pay my gas money to go back and forth but i would say in this past year roughly i've probably made four thousand dollars and i remember you told us that in kansas and i was like what yeah yeah, hard to kind of survive like that. But, I mean, in the end, man, we need money to live and stuff like that. But the sentimental value for me and the meaning, my dad would do anything in this world for me. So mm-hmm. I think it's only fair that I give him what he gave me because now it's my turn to do that for him. Yeah. So. Just well, pretty cool you're getting to work on it together, too. I mean, it, is he still helping you out with it? Absolutely. Um, and – We've talked, and basically, when my grandfather passes, it goes to my mom. And then when they pass, eventually, it will go to me. And we just actually had it appraised. Just the structures and the land now on it, the first appraisal was, I think, 140 on Mm -hmm. the idea and the drawing. Yeah. But uh, they just came in at $270,000. Not, yeah. not finished so yeah so once those are finished off you're probably looking close to four you've got in good the area. yeah well and i mean land and things like that just keep going up yeah you know yep. it doesn't stop and we haven't even used we didn't even use all the loan money because i mean i'm sure you guys are familiar but if you're going to build something you only have a certain amount of time before that loan defaults yeah and then you got to redo it all again yep so that process already happened and we were kind of stuck um uh I honestly right about close to when hunting season opened in Ohio. So, uh, which I told them, I was like, hey, like you guys know, deer hunting and ball, that's that's my thing. I'm not <laughs> yeah. saying I'm going to be gone for two months at a time, but I would like to go get sure. some time in. And uh, so it defaulted and they started working on all that. And I started sitting this year, probably October 16th, I think was my first sit. First sit this year? Yep. And, and not on that property. Nope, not on that property. Different stake ground. I stake was ground. doing hanging hunts. And last year, I killed 151 and like 2 eighths inch 8-pointer, eight 25 inch main beams. I mean, a dec- a good deer. Yeah, Biggest deer good. I've ever killed. That's a good deer. A very so, good 8-pointer. <laughs> yeah, it's a good deer. I would deer. shoot it any day of the week. <laughs> yeah, 150 inch 8 points, a big deer. And uh, coincidentally enough. And that was on stake ground? That was not on stake okay. ground. That was on private, but I no longer have access to that private ground. Gotcha. Um, it actually got leased out. Of course so. it did. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool enough, um, one of my buddies, Corey is his name, he found the sheds off of that deer that I killed. 
Really? Three, three miles away from where I shot him, both sides. Um, he found the one side by himself, and then the left side. Um, I just started getting into shed hunting probably two years ago with him. Mm-hmm. And uh, me and him found that left side together. And once he came up there to help me get him out, he looked down at him. He's like, man, that's the sheds that we found. I was like, are you sure? And he said, absolutely. Look at those brow tines because they kind of kick in. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, it was. Oh. Yeah. So. That's he, wild. He ended up giving me those sheds um, off of that deer. But What did you say that deer ended up growing in a year? Like 20-something <clears throat> inches? Um, He, with roughly, I guess, the 16-inch inside spread, he mm. was 134. 31 inches mm-hmm. so yeah sounds about right 20 inches i would say he was that's big eight though anywhere four and a half five yeah probably but uh yeah bouncing around from stake ground to stake ground um i knew i didn't have an ample amount of time sure as far as i can be here mm-hmm. for three months and i can really invest in this and i didn't have the money to run cell cameras mm-hmm. so didn't have the money to buy cameras. Heck, the camera I've been using, I've been using that since I was probably 23 years <laughs> old. Um, my boots, they are insulated, but they are so dry rotted and cracked. Heck, the toe's about missing off the right one. But uh, I was doing all day sits. And my goal this year going in was I want to kill a 160 inch deer. And I did have one deer about 40 yards from me. And he was a 10. And he was a nice deer, a very yeah. mature deer. I would say five years old. And yeah. I would say he was really close to that 160s. But that was really close to my birthday, October 24th or so, yeah. somewhere right around in there. And I was just like, eh, I'll get, I'll get more time to sit. I don't want to necessarily, not that I would regret shooting that deer, but I just enjoy it so much, man. It's it's the most peaceful thing in the world. Sure. Everything crazy going on, everything that's been happening and stuff like that. I just enjoy watching them, learning. So uh, I decided to pass him. Um, and if I ate tag soup, I ate tag soup. That was just a risk I was willing to take. Can't kill big bucks if you kill little bucks. Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. And uh, my sister, actually, I had her sign the permission slip um, October 1st. I was like, I don't even know if I'll go out there. She actually jointly owns the land with her her mother mm. and her mother i was gonna say why'd she have to sign the permissions but that makes sense yeah her mother is not a big fan of me at all i actually have a funny story about uh <laughs> the odnr officer and me going out there um probably six days after i shot him yeah and she was out there on the porch and she said i don't even know who the hell that is <laughs> and i was like <laughs> that's my sister's mom she's she's not the biggest fan of me <laughs> The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Muddy. Man, Jared, we probably have been using Muddy products for at least 10 years now. It's a long time, dude. It's been a long time. And I can remember when it was simply just safety harnesses and camera arms of all things. And, you know, that's evolved to where you and I both have a bunch of Muddy box blinds as well. I would say a bunch. But, yeah, they, they've come a long way. And certainly the box blinds are, are huge. Shot that buck of your shoulder out of a Muddy box blind a couple of years ago. The harness and, and all of the other safety accessories really are, are a major component of, of what Muddy offers for me. Um, you know, we've had some injuries in the past, you know, some, some tree stand accidents. This, this is all back before we were using, uh, you know, frankly, harnesses, mm-hmm. uh, the lineman's belt while we're hanging stuff, and the safe lines. I have those in every single one of, uh, you know, our fixed tree stands now. And uh, so we really have made safety a priority. Uh, that, that's a big deal for us. And, uh, you know, Muddy has everything we need for that. Yeah, and I think uh, the cool thing about Muddy is anyone listening to the Hunter podcast can save 20% using the code HUNTER20. That's H-U-N-T-R-2-0. Uh, anything that you can see on the Muddy Outdoors store online, use that code, save yourself 20% for this hunting season. Go Muddy. Okay, so you, we get to, I guess at some point you told me like you, you didn't have a weapon and you didn't have a stand. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Which seems to be problematic. It is very problematic. Um, I ended up buying a crossbow. Um, and it's a dirty word. That was one of the words we said earlier. <laughs> you can't say on the podcast. <laughs> so solely for the purpose of my fiance has not really been around someone who loves deer she hunting. Shoots crossbows. Like, <laughs> <laughs> now, now I, don't blame you. I don't know if she's been around someone that's even shot anything. To be honest with you, but uh, she was. 
I talk to her about it a lot, probably to the point where she's like, I do not care about this. Just please shut up. I'm going to nod my head and say yes and smile oh, just yeah. to make you feel good. But We've uh, all been there. Yeah. Um, 100%. She uh, talked to me before season, and I said, I'd like you to go out and sit with me. I was like, I don't know where we would go. I'd have to find some place. I really don't want to get you 30 foot up in a tree mm-hmm. for your first time. Um, but we'll figure something Bust out. Bust and brush on public land. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doesn't sound like a fun, fun day. Stuff. No. So... Uh, She's like, I, I would be interested. Uh, I said, so if I buy a crossbow, you'd be willing to go out there? And she's like, I mean, as long as it ain't negative 20 outside, yeah. She's like, I'd as long be- as nobody sees us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I bought, and it ended up costing about 500 bucks. It had a silent crank on it and everything like that. So if she missed or something like that, she would be able to crank it. I miss or something, I'll be able to crank it. And... Uh, <clears throat> It shoots 425, so obviously. Yeah, blowing through. Stupid yeah. fast. Mm-hmm. But um, I shot it, got it sighted in. And, uh, sighted in at 100. Not quite 100. <laughs> about, about 60, about uh-huh, 60. Uh-huh. But, um, Is it I, a crosser or do they have pins? Um, so this one specifically has like a big dot for your 20, and I believe it's a five dot. Um, oh yeah, so it'll so yeah. slowly get smaller dots. Kids okay. Raven has that same one. I don't yeah. know what, if it's like their scopes, but yeah, okay. yeah. And um, are they on? Like, if you sight it in for twenty, it's it's out. It's good out to whatever. Honestly, surprisingly enough, you would think there wouldn't be much drop on it, but the sixty yard dot, you have to aim. A decent amount. Mm-hmm. Those are pretty good drop. Yeah. I and you can't that. adjust them individually, like a, you know, like a single pin where you're putting different tapes on. I guess that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Do you sight them all in individually? No. no. You sight no. the 20 in and then and it's supposed to be. hope and pray that they're all where you want them to be. I know my. um Just hope and pray? There's no adjustment? Well, so I know that scope that I have on the kit's crossbow has like some sort of dial yeah. on Just the front out. for the speed. Speed? The feet per second. Yeah. 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 But I don't know how accurate that is. Um, The more high-end crossbows and stuff like that you can buy aftermarket scopes that will do that yeah but this scope i mean it's an all right crossbow but it's nothing like just point blow you away yeah Yeah. um but uh i ended up having to go back to uh tennessee for a few days to uh my dad cut a tree down and here recently he had a bump almost like a knot pop up on his right carotid artery and he had been feeling really dizzy and stuff and my dad's already had three heart attacks and his father passed away from a massive heart attack at 54 years old. Jeez. Yeah, so that runs in his side of the family. Honestly, I think my Grandpa Larry was the oldest one of the Alexanders until my dad. We had a lot die in the 40s, 50s, all of heart attacks. Wow. Yeah, so uh, he felt so bad. He's a very old school person. I watched him drop a 700-pound freezer on his foot and snap his foot completely in half, and mm-hmm. he just yelled for, oh, <laughs> and then he's like, ah, oh, I look like a baby in front of my son. I was just like, you're out of your mind. I said, <laughs> Dude, you're carrying a refrigerator through the yard. <laughs> Pick this thing up off of me, CJ. And then we went right back to loading it. He's he's something else. But um, he cut a tree down. Uh, he cuts grass and stuff around the neighborhood. That's mm-hmm. kind of his thing to pass his time now. And uh, he cut this these two big trees. And um, all this started happening. And he had to go to Ohio because that's where he goes to the doctor. Gotcha. Tennessee doctors are not not the best. Mm. Like if I have a if I'm having a heart attack, I'm driving all the way to Kentucky. I'll take my chances. Yeah, get up to Louisville or Lexington. Yeah, unless you're going to Vanderbilt or Knoxville. Or yeah, that some, makes sense. Something like that. But uh, Dad's been going to that doctor, and he actually went to that dude's dad for sh- past forty years. I mm-hmm. mean, a long time. So basically, very familiar with him. Yep. Um. I ended up going down there and recruited Heath, um, our buddy, whose pa owns a um, logging company. His name's Jake. And somehow one of our buddies, Adam, got swung into it. He got invited over, and he's like, what are y'all about to do? And I was like, I'm about to go cut up some trees. He's like, I'll come with you guys. <laughs> so uh, we cut these trees up and uh, get them all done, uh, end up having to load I'm up on a, I'd say probably what, 15 foot? Yeah, 15 double or 16. Double axle trailer. And uh, put them back behind the two new houses because they're going to run wood stoves. Got it. Yep. And uh, dad was getting paid for the job and he was freaking out because he's like, I don't want it to look like a mess. Sure. Like they come up there for their vacations and stuff. They don't live there. So 
didn't want to do that and i didn't even tell him i just drove up there i was like screw this i know him he's gonna end up going out there and trying to heart do it attack anyways, and yeah. be laying out there dead so we went up there and did that um the dude asked me he said you want me to pay you or you want me to pay your mom i was like no brother i just did it to help my dad i said pay my dad i don't want no money from it and um so yeah we did that and uh i hung out for the rest of that night and then uh sunday i think is when i headed back and that would have probably been right around november 1st but when i was down there i went to shoot my crossbow 20 yards sat there ranged it out uh got down on the ground it's actually the stirrup you can pull it and it'll set up and almost be mm -hmm. like a tripod and i shoot and i'm like what the hell just happened <laughs> arrow did not hit it at all um and it was a bunch of logs behind it too so i was like it'd be stuck in that or something so i'm going there looking can't find this bolt anywhere so i'm starting to get pissed and then i walk back up to the crossbow the string snapped right in half didn't even notice it didn't sound different nothing like that wow literally probably 20 shots Jeez. 20 shots called the manufacturer and they basically said buddy you're up shit creek without a paddle because like, it's wait. a string yeah they said uh that could be user error it's like you guys literally have a dry firing safety system on it so if the bolt's not all the way back it won't it's, fire it's not gonna go off and i've been shooting bows since i was 13 14 years old but i mean i get it i get it they're just wound too tight man you, ca you can't pack those bows into 400 plus feet per second they're not mm -mm. i think that's just too much because remember that guy that was elk hunting yeah uh, with it he blew up two but like during that week and i was like how do you blow it just up? doesn't sound like statistically it's like they, you couldn't sell those things if they blow up as frequently as i've heard about it, it seems like they're the more that they try to go up in fps it's just durability is just not yeah, there. yeah it's not there i'm sure there has to be some well i know raven went through a big recall at one point did they um yeah was there user know. error like did you have a bold in it was there like do you think you did something wrong or honestly no i really don't think but it's it's hard to say um did you ever find a bolt weirdly enough when we cut that tree down and stuff i was back in the truck up and he, <laughs> he got out of the truck and he said hey dick and i said what he said you want your bolt back <laughs> he reached out <laughs> and picked it up i was like no kidding so it, it shot the bolt it did shoot it and yeah, no, it was yeah. through it yep but That's it only crazy. went like eight yards wow yeah yep um so it must have like as it was shooting it broke and it didn't have the force yeah it kind of just <laughs> slapped her out there <laughs> huh yep and weirdly enough the whole reason i bought the crossbow that i bought is because i was going to buy a killer instinct and my fiance and him kept sending me pictures of them having limbs break He's like, bro, I wouldn't buy that. I'd pay a little extra money to get a more durable crossbow. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Guess Bad what? Advice. Guess what? More money, still no durability. What did you buy? A 10 point or something? A center point. A center, center point. point. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, and you bought that so that your fiance could also hunt with that? Or it was just, it was, you're like, hey, Absolutely. we have limited time. And um, I did it mainly for her because I. I primarily shoot compounds. I mean, that's what I've. Oh, dude, I'm not. You don't have to make excuses. I'm just yeah, asking. It's yeah, good. primarily shoot compounds. Um, last year, I, the eight I shot, I shot with a Hoyt Defiant 30, and in 2016, 2017, when those bows came out, I actually very dumb financial decision. Anyone that's in college, do not do this. <laughs> Spent three grand on a Hoyt Carbon Defiant 30, and. Uh, yeah that was not the best move ended up selling it like five months later for like five hundred dollars because i needed the money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wish i would have known you then yeah absolutely mm -hmm. what, so what happened to the bow that you shot last year um i ended up selling it just because honestly i was like i want something newer um i guess i'm high maintenance <laughs> <laughs> I, I want the newest and the best stuff but sadly financially that's an expensive hobby sure uh, but remember what I told you on the phone, right? I do. They're sending you an RX-8. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. I, I, I didn't do anything. I just called Hoyt and told him what was happening, and he's he's like, what do you want? I was like, we want a loaded RX-8. <laughs> I greatly appreciate it, guys. I really do. Yeah. I, I mean, we send it to him. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. get your address, and we're going to send it right to you. I appreciate that. Yeah, he was real. cool. They were cool as hell. They were like, yes definitely yes that's absolutely so amazing. you'll be you'll be in the chips again well when i told her and I he can you. inherit your crossbow <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i'm good on the <laughs> so, 
Sorry, Heath. Uh, when <laughs> I talked to you guys, I told my fiance about the conversation because I was kind of fanboy, and she's like, "Oh, so that's my crossbow now." And I was like, "I guess so." <laughs> there it is. Well, so that one blew up. So, so where'd you go from there? Um, my buddy Corey that I was telling you about that I found uh, that shed with, and he yeah. found the other shed. He's got an Excalibur Matrix 380, which is a recurve crossbow. He's, oh yeah. He's had it for about 12 years, and um, he is honestly a more talented deer hunter than I am. He's more knowledgeable and everything like that. Um, we're the same age and everything like that. Is he from Ohio? He is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, he's actually from Lebanon, I believe, which is about 30 minutes from Wilmington or so. But, uh, so he said, well, buddy, I'll tell you what, during the week, you can definitely use my bow because I wake up at four in the morning for work and I don't get home until six. So mm -hmm. there's no way possible. Yeah, I'm not getting out. Yeah. And, he is very invested into it um, and has a lot of tactic cams spread out all over the place. So mm -hmm. basically, if I ain't got something in daylight or something that I'm interested in shooting, I'm not going to go out there and put any presence on the property unless it's to put corn out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, I said, all right. And uh, he said, what about a stand? And I said, I still got my sticks. Um, and he had a old, not an old hang on, but not a very like high end hang on. Sure. And, uh, that's what I was using for my hanging hunts. But, um, I actually left my stand hung up in a tree on state ground. And, uh, when rut started kicking in, like I wasn't seeing really any deer and I kept talking to my dad. He's like, you need to go out to your sisters. You need to go out to your sisters. I'm telling you. He said, I know it don't look like much. I said, but go out there. I was like, I don't even have no way I could sit. Like, what am I going to do, sit on the ground? He's like, mm -hmm. what we used to do. And I was like, no, I, <laughs> Yeah, I ain't yeah with it. a gun. <laughs> yeah, I, I ain't doing that. But um, he said, well, I got a summit climber. He said, I don't know if you got a tree out there, but if you want to, you can use it. So, uh, so you're packing in a 30-pound climber on your back? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> um, actually, Is that I, what you killed this thing from? Yeah. The climber. summit climber? Yep. Mm. Yep. Um. Uh, her mom doesn't go to work until like five thirty, six in the evening. So what I had Carissa do the day I hunted it, she pulled up to the edge of the property down past the house a little bit. And I got out of the car and I walked the edge just because I was like, I don't want no confrontation and I, she's not going to be anywhere near me. And what? so you were planning an all day set. Absolutely. Yep. I got in there about five o'clock in the morning. And how far is the farm from your place? Uh, yeah, about 15 minutes. Okay. Yep. Um, so I'm sitting there. Um, I don't like using flashlights or anything like that when I go in, and that stuff was... Yeah, but you've never been on the property. <laughs> I've, I've, I've been on it, but it had been a long time. Um, I fished those ponds. I've been there with my sister here and there, with yep. going to see her grandma Joe and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I uh, walked back there, and I was like, I knew from looking on Google Maps and stuff like that. I was like just there using an Onyx or Google Maps? Uh, Corey looked at it on Onyx. I had it pulled up on Google Maps. Yeah. But uh, we seen those two big wood lots, that agricultural field, and that finger of woods that connected them on my end. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the type of land that that is, I knew that was going to be bedding. So I knew going in that I was probably going to spook some deer out of their beds. Yeah. But... I mean, chances are they're going to come back through. Uh, the, that's the main source of water around that place. Um, bedding. There's food right there by me. Did you play with wind at all? I did. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm it, trying to envision it. Like where you're hunting, is, it's a brushy connecting piece between two bigger blocks of timber. Yep. It's I literally it uh, the tree line. I would say if you're standing on one edge looking into the uh, ag field, the edge of the tree line by that ag field, it's probably 20, 20 yards wide long okay but um i just walked down that right corner of the property and went in the right back corner kind of glanced around tried to find some trees um and yeah because you're in a climber they got to be pretty damn straight yes um am i here am i hearing you wrong or it sounds like a no-brainer like when you look at it it's like here's two major woodlots and there's a brushy tree line that runs down the center of them absolutely okay uh, i was like chances are with the time of year it is and chasing and stuff like that I know no one's on that property, so yeah. I could see them if they get locked down or something like that, a mature one, I could see them take them to that property. I mean, it would make sense to me. They got everything they need right there. 
Um, and that, and if they're traveling back and forth, chances are they're not going to walk. A mature buck mm-hmm. is probably not going to walk in the middle of that ag field. I mean, maybe, but it'd probably be nighttime. Sure. Um, so I set up right there in the corner. I was probably five yards into the woods and took me. Did you see any scrapes or anything? Like you're hunting and you're just, this is the terrain yep. landscape. This is where I'm setting up. Yep. I'm just going to go right here in this corner. Um, Ended up going about 25, 30 foot up in the tree. Uh, forgot my pull rope. <laughs> Luckily, I had a rope in my bag, so I tied his crossbow, the stirrup, mm-hmm. to my bag. So I had the crossbow, my backpack, and I'm sitting here trying to get up this tree, making so oh, much dude. noise. We were talking about the other day, remember? We were like, how did ever, anybody ever kill a deer in a climber? They're so loud. They weren't nearby when you are getting it in. <laughs> yeah. 10 out of 10 would not recommend. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely sure. not. That's all I hunted out of for a long time, though. It's all I, there were no hang-ons. Yeah. Well, heck, the newer hang-ons nowadays, like um, Corey's got a few uh, Millennium mm-hmm. hang-ons, and he's got the brackets for them, too. So you just see yeah, I hang the bracket and Yeah, that thing in. is. Yeah. I sit for four days straight now on those, as long as it ain't super cold. Yeah. Cadillac. Yeah, I definitely a Cadillac. But uh, I got up in the tree. I'd say by the time I got up there, I had about 40 minutes till the sun started coming up. Um, didn't hear nothing. Heck, I didn't even see a deer until 11 o'clock. And it was out in that ag field. Just literally a couple does going right across it, going from one woodlot to the other. Uh, I think all day during that sit, I seen, not counting him, five or six deer. Wow. Yeah, very, very, very slow day. And to top it all off, I forgot my phone at the house, too. Wow. So no, what, what day was this? No, November 9th. 9th. That's the day I shot my buck in Illinois. Was it? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's why it was so familiar, because we, we were going, I was driving to Kansas on the 10th. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But uh, didn't see much. What time did you shoot him? Uh, roughly. Did I shoot mine? Based on about the same time, the way the sun was and stuff. Um, yeah, you is that retail time? I'm like, one hand, <laughs> that's, that's about an hour. Like, Sun's I got an hour day life left. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Trying to get my Cherokee Indian on. But <laughs> um, I would assume it was probably around four o'clock when uh, I thought it was two does that was working their way mm-hmm. up this tree line. You had a deer. Did you have a doe and a, a buck, a button buck a in front of you? A buck, yes, I did. Um, yep. They're the ones that came up the tree line first. I would say it was probably an hour. I mean, they were there, and they were just back and forth. After they walked up that tree line, they walked right by me, seven, eight yards. They were going back and forth from that pond. They would go in the woods right there in front of me. Um, it's almost kind of got a clearing um, like path to get back to mm-hmm. that agriculture field. And they were going back and forth, browsing, stuff like that. And it was getting pretty, pretty close to sunset. I would assume it was probably around 5, 5.05, something like that. Mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of bucks grunt out in the woods, um, but I've never heard what I heard that day. It was more of a roar, just so deep, the deepest grunt I've ever heard. In my was life. it long or short? It was decently long. Yeah. And yeah. just one? It, it, yeah. It wasn't so much a tending grunt. It was like, bit, 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 yeah. bit, but it was more like, so I was like, whoa, what was that? Yeah. So I'm sitting there and I'm turning, looking, <laughs> don't see anything. So I'm like, I'm just going crazy. Like there's nothing there. So I'm sitting there watching these does and she keeps on picking her head up, looking down that tree line, down the ponds. It's like, she's looking at something. Mm-hmm. Like there's definitely something coming. I'd say about 10 minutes goes by. I hear it again. Uh, turn and look. That's the first time I've seen him. What did you think as soon as you turned around? Uh, <laughs> about shit my pants. Yeah. <laughs> about shit my pants. Like that, that has to be like, I don't even know if most people's brain could process what they're looking at. Yeah. I would say with where I grew up, Highland County, um, we got some pretty good deer out there. Sure. It's obviously not the upper echelon of Ohio, but we got some big ones. I've seen 170, 180 inch deer mm-hmm. on the hoof, but just not close enough to shoot. Sure. Um, but instantly heart pounding, like, oh man, like grab grab the bow, just go ahead and grab the bow now, because where he was coming, it was to my back right. Mm-hmm. So this tree was decently big around, and the bow was hung to my left. Yep. So I go went ahead, 
grabbed it, stood up, flipped it off safety, had my finger up, and I was like, he's going to walk right on this edge. 100% he's going to do what this doe and this button buck did. Well, when he started getting about 50 yards away, which he was looking, it had been a hard quartering two shot, and sure. there was a lot of brush and stuff like that. So yeah. I didn't want to risk that. Um, she He ended up driving her off into that woods back in front of me to my left, probably 20, 25 yards to my front left. And he ended up doing like a little half U shape and went down a path and which would have been perfect as well. I mean, he probably, if he just stayed in that wood line, no further than 15 yards, but she's sitting there watching him. Like, yeah. No way. Not happening. Mm-hmm. Dude. So <laughs> he got probably <clears throat> with the route he took, I would say he was probably 40 yards from her and she ended up busting back out. And the way these ponds and stuff work, she ran up the if you're looking at the back right side of the property there's maybe barely enough to get your truck if you were to drive that back right sure right there just tight pinch yeah so she took up off up on the edge and went about halfway to the pond and he's sitting there looking at her and he turns around goes back out the way he comes so i'm sitting here thinking like please please (laughs) do not go back where you came from all the way please but he comes out uh same way he went in and uh, he ends up cutting left, starts walking right down to me. At this time, it's it's starting to get pretty close to dark. Like, sun is setting. It's getting cold. And uh, he ended up walking right along the edge of that tree line. There was a, a log, and he stopped right there before that log. And that's where I shot him, seven yards away from me. <laughs> and instantly, um, Corey had Luminox on these arrows. <laughs> and... Most of the time. When you know a broadhead it was on there? Yes. It was the Excalibur brand broadhead. It's a fixed blade. And I'm talking I a very small. About it was a man, very small maybe, broadhead. Maybe an inch and a quarter. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And from where I was so high up and he was so close to me. Um, yeah. I mean, you were almost like straight down on him. Yeah. Um, his first pin, it actually says the yardage is like on his in the scope. It was 20 yards. So I aimed literally high left shoulder is probably what mm-hmm. it would have been mm-hmm. and um, i assume i probably jerked the trigger really bad but uh i end up hitting him i don't know man those recurve crossbows are not that accurate either <sighs> aren't what? they no they're not um i honestly shot it once and <laughs> when i shot it, it at, at it, a 235 inch deer no nah, i once. shot it i shot it before that <laughs> I shot it before that, and it was shooting a little high. I think so, she was pretty good. Yeah, I, I adjusted it down just a little bit, um, and I just wanted to feel the trigger, see like sure. when it mm-hmm. was getting there and when it would go. Should be right on though. I mean, even being a recurve crossbow at fifteen, tw- you know, yeah, especially yeah. seven yards, that's, it's going to be. If I anything, mean, it's going to hit an inch high, right? That's what I was thinking. Um, height wise or low. Height. At seven yards, it hit a, It would hit high, high. higher than you're aiming mm-hmm. a yes. touch. Yeah, yeah, straight down. Yes. Um. So, height-wise, it honestly hit about where I was aiming, but it literally hit him right in front of his back left ham. Quarter like, two. W- almost right in that crease, but it was a little bit higher. So, where that back strap comes in, it was probably two inches from that spine. Holy spine yeah. shot in him. And um, the angle, he was not quite completely even with me. He was still a little so behind me. So it's like me. quarter two? Yes, but with like the brush and stuff, mm-hmm. it was that or wait for him to get past me and have no idea what that doe does. Say she takes off sure. and runs towards the and front of the property, he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, so, what do you think happened? I mean, it obviously didn't hit where you were aiming. Be honest with you, the whole reason I have never shot crossbows is because gun hunting, I have really bad, and I don't know if it derives from that first time I shot that 20 gauge or not, I have really bad trigger anxiety of, like, just the reaction. Like, I know it's about to You're, go off. Yeah, so target panic? Tarnic. Yeah, it's target panic. Yeah, basically. But with a compound bow, I'm not like that at all. And yeah, I, I think it's the release. Oh, with a it gun just, and a crossbow you are? Yeah. Okay. I just assume it's the release, um, all the tension on the release. You barely touch it, and it's boom. Yeah. Gone. But uh, So you think you flinched? Yes. Beforehand? Yeah, yeah I think so. And I was just... I mean, falling apart. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, because I, I mean, how much? How long have you watched this deer now at this point before you shot? 
I would say a good 30 minutes. I couldn't oh imagine. My I God. couldn't imagine. Yeah. Looking through binos at all? Like, nope. He's that nope. close. You did don't you have binos? binos? I did not have binos. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a range finder? Do you wish you had binos to watch them for 30 minutes? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get crapped on for this, but no. Corey has an extra range finder you didn't that have I the had range in, my finder. Fr- in my front pocket. Um, but I didn't even pull it out because... It's not built into the scope? Nope. Hmm. Nope. But, uh, yeah, I just didn't even... Wow. Didn't even think to pull it out or anything like that. And the paths that I thought he was going to take, I knew he was going to be yeah. close. It's worth mentioning, uh, this is Ohio, and you didn't have a corn pile out. I did not. I had a crossbow, but no corn pile. Mm-hmm. 50-50. Across your mind? Um, typically, when I'm hunting private land, it's going to depend on the land, honestly, and the pressure around me yeah. that I'm going to... I mean, obviously, if they're putting out... 10 yeah. bags of corn then it's funny I, I like to ask people just just like you know well, why not because people are baiting with corn so i like to just judge people's uh their demeanor like their mentality 100 yeah, percent. i, yes. I was at the tax service the other day Corey, who just left shot uh he's only shot a handful of bucks uh you know this was his first buck on his own that i mm-hmm. wasn't in the stand with him so we took that into the tax service and uh we we're just making friends with there was guys the guy was dropping a giant like uh i mean <laughs> yeah. Re- relatively right big yeah. deer gotta watch what you're saying now for me a big deer you yeah. know it was like a, whatever it was probably pushing 170 it was like at least mid 60s heavy for you know uh great deer you know 10 point uh big sticker off the two stuff his 11 year old kid had shot it was opening day of youth season and um I was just tell him I was like, yeah, that's amazing that's awesome i said you, you guys hunt over to corn pile and i just it's, you know yeah and he's like, oh, you know, small, small corn pile. <laughs> small, small <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't think the size matters. But it's funny. It's funny how people's like the response. Well, I mean, even that. if you would have, uh, in order for it to be effective, you would have had to have it out prior to that hunt. Absolutely. Right. I mean, like if anything, you put a corn pile, the first time deer comes in, they're like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, funny 100%. enough, my uh, brother-in-law, my uh, sister's basically husband, mm-hmm. he has a camera out there now with a corn pile. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> he does. does. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so he was Too living in the now. house? Uh, no. Um, they, they weren't there yet. They had not moved in yet. Her mom had been bouncing back and forth. I don't know if they had a futon or what. Gotcha. She would stay there sometimes just to keep eyes on the property, mm-hmm. and then sometimes she would stay with her friend. I think her name's Tracy. But, um, yeah, seven yards. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew instantly because I seen the Luminox. He said not good. Not good at all. Not good. What did he do? Um, the first 15, 20 yards, he had a pretty good trot to him, but nothing like he wasn't peeling out of yeah, there. Yeah, no. But I noticed tail in between his legs mm-hmm. and hunched over, and he actually kind of went up by where that doe went, mm-hmm. and he ended up circling back down around me to the left originally when he was going to come down that path. He ended up circling back down that way. Wow. And it's starting to get pretty dark at this point. I so mean, I mean, he's covered uh, what? Over 100 yards in that yes. loop. Yes, and um, I'm sitting there trying to watch him, trying to watch him, and he ends up cutting over to the left where the CRP and stuff is. With no binos. With no binos. Dude. You could see him. You could see him. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, I guarantee it. <laughs> but uh, he disappeared, um, I would guesstimate, around 550, 555. It was a very, very thick, like, sycamore tree, just bushy stuff. And just kind of squ- Sucked yep, in snuck, there. Snuck out of there. So I'm sitting there like, I'm not going to find this deer. At this point, I'm absolutely tore up. She's... You don't have a phone. I don't have a phone. She's supposed to pick me up at dark. So I'm like... <laughs> it's dark 30 at this point. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, I'm ready to jump out of that climber to get down. Yeah, with your with your harness over your neck. <laughs> yes. And Jared and I have been there a few times. But uh, I'm sitting there thinking in my head, I'm like, what is the best thing to do right here? I said he wasn't in a hurry. Yeah. So I would say he doesn't go far. And most of the time, in my experience with gut shot deer, they're going to want water eventually. Mm -hmm. So if he doesn't go by that pond now, chances are he'll probably go back by it. So I was like, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to wait. I'm going to try to see her pull in because she was picking me up at nighttime. Um, Sit there probably like 40, 45 minutes after dark. And slowly meticulously climb out of this tree trying to make the least amount of noise that sure, i can because you figure he's close yep and uh i didn't even take the climber out that night just i just left everything. it at the base of the tree yeah um where the arrow was was it was in his direction he went but it was so close to me i did sneak over there and grab it 
And what it it went like. all the way through. It was a pass through. Yeah, absolutely. It blew right through. What it looked like. Um, I didn't have a light, so at the time, really had no idea. <laughs> Slimy? <laughs> Brother. No light, no binos. No, no. Um, had a range finder, didn't use it. Yeah. Mm. Basically everything you could do to shit the bed. Well, I, you know, honestly, <laughs> the more I watch uh, social media, I think that you did everything to do to kill a giant, because this is how people kill giants, is they just go out there and don't have this, don't have that, and yep. then they're like, yep, yeah, kill a giant. Yep. Mm -hmm. But um, You're on to something here, I think. End up getting to the car. And she's like, what took you so long? And I'm just like, I shot a deer. And she's like, you did? I said, yeah. And she's like, was it a big one? And instantly I start getting emotional. I start crying. And I was like, that's the biggest deer I've ever seen in my life. So I turn the car light on and I'm looking at the arrow. And honestly, I didn't even know this at the time because I've only ever gut shot it one deer. <laughs> Before this, in the front seat with your fiance with the car light on, looking at your air. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> kids in the back. Like, you should deer, you should deer. Yep, yep. I, shot I was deer. like, let's, gotcha, dad. Let, let's not talk about it. Um, <laughs> but the shaft of the bolt, um, it had a little bit of blood and kind of like a slimy residue, but mm -hmm. honestly, surprisingly, not a very foul odor on it. But the fletchings, they had a bright, bright pink blood on them, almost like a lung shot, a hundred percent of. Interesting. So I get back to the house and um, I FaceTime Corey. And again, I don't even care to admit this. I was crying. Sure. And he's like, as, I, as we all would. He's like, well, what, what, what happened, man? What happened? And I told him, and he's like, so you didn't hit him good. I was like, no. Like, this is the worst shot I've ever made on a deer. Like, I guarantee you, we don't find this deer. And he said, let me see the bolt. So I showed it to him. And he said, buddy, he said, if you'd have hit straight guts, he said, you wouldn't have those bl that that blood, blood wouldn't be on it. He said, know. the intestines is a very waxy organ. He said, typically with that kind of shot, you may have blood as it's going through, but that'll mm. wipe it clean. Clean it out. He's like, so don't get down yet. He said, it's not over yet. He's like asking me the angle on the shot and everything. He said, you might hit that femoral artery. He's like, so what we're going to do, he said, I know you're not going to sleep tonight, but um, we're going to let him sit. He said, I could probably be over there around 10 o'clock and we'll get out there. Were you guessing? Like... I'm sure people were asking, how big is he? How big was he? Uh, were you saying, like, the biggest yes, buck I've ever seen? Biggest buck. I guessed him. He said, how big is he, <clears throat> CJ? And I said, probably 180-190-inch deer. And he said, just like the deer you could last year was 160s. <laughs> 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 he said, I swear, if we get out here and it is not as big as you say it is, he said, I'm not going to be happy. Oh, God. So uh, he's just taking. What do you guess? Like at that point, like you say, do you sound ridiculous to guess? You're like oh, two thirty. Yeah, you sound I, like yeah. I don't <laughs> sound like a douchebag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you say I think he was over two twenty. If you yeah. if you say he's over two hundred, you better damn well be sure yeah. he's over two hundred percent. Yes, and uh, I, I called him, talked to him about it, and I told him I said, Heath, this deer's thickness was the size of my forearm. He's like, now come on. I was like, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> But we ended up getting out there probably 10.30 the next day. 10.30 in the morning. Yep. Um, wow. We park up towards the front of the property. There's a giant barn. We mm -hmm. park right there. And he said, well, what do you want to do? And you we guys intention? I'm sorry to cut you off. Do you wait intentionally till 10.30 or just like that's as early as you can get over there? As bad as the shot was, um, and he was driving about 40 minutes and stuff like that, and I actually have really bad um, anxiety and panic attacks. Mm -hmm. So... I could not sleep that night, and I ended up taking up some of my medicine, mm -hmm. and he didn't want to leave until he got a hold of me. Okay. So he's like, I don't want to go there. Your door's locked, and me just be sitting in the truck. Gotcha. With my thumb up my ass. Yeah. Like, well, fair enough. Fair enough. So he said, you get a hold of me. So I got a hold of him, and that's just ended up how it, how it worked okay. out. Okay, all right. And he said, so how do you want to do this? And I said, Phew. I said, we know we can see through that, um, that little row into mm -hmm. that dag field. I said, I say we go up the left side of the area, so complete opposite side. I said, mm -hmm. let's sneak back there. I said, there's thick CRP right in there. See if he's laying dead right there, and we'll take a look out in that field. We don't see him. We'll circle back around. Start trying to find blood. Yep. So we walk down there. We're looking everywhere, and he's like, I don't see anything, man. And I said, yeah, me neither. So he's like, let's go. Let's go to where you shot him. Go to where uh, I shot him. And I am also colorblind i was gonna just ask are you because this is a big thing for a lot of people is like how do you how do you feel when you track deer like i i love tracking deer me too that's kind of like in my blood honestly 
Um, Jared hates it. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Every, who likes tracking deer? I like finding deer. <laughs> Every deer. Exactly. Yeah. It's not I like maybe coming the track, up on them. But yeah. when you first see that deer from 30, 40 yards away and you see him laying there. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. I'm with you on that. I'm uh, like, there's the deer. Jimmy's like, Shh, I'm still. <laughs> there it is. I'm not right to the now. end of the trail <laughs> yet. got to figure it out. No going yeah. up there. <laughs> you just learn a lot of stuff about what like a wounded deer does. Uh-huh. And it's, and how it's they weird, move. man. Yep. You yep. can never know too much about them. You really so you circle can. back to blood. Yep. Um, go to where I shot him. I'm colorblind, red and green deficient. So well, that's going to be a me, disadvantage. Yes. So uh, yeah, like, is that blood? And he's like, no, that's grass. How, yeah. <laughs> how, how, how bad can you see? Um, if you pulled up one of those colorblind things yeah. uh, on the screen, you three would be like, ah, that's that's 44 in there. And I'd be sitting there and be like, that's yeah, yeah. a shit ton of dots, boys. That's, that's all <laughs> Well, so I'm blue, green, colorblind. Yeah. See, but I'm I can't tell the difference. In real life, I couldn't tell you. Like, I could tell Nick's hoodie's blue. I could tell his hat's green. Absolutely. Um, I've always wondered what the red green is actually like. Could you see blood on grass <sighs> at all? I can. It's just so much harder for me. Like, lung blood, if it's on a light leaf, yeah. yes, that's that's easy. But as far as, like, that type of thought, terrain, you know. yeah, that CRP and stuff. No. What do you see? So Not when you chance. know it's blood, what what do you see? Gray? Uh, no, it, gray. It, it's still red. It's just not, it blends more. Yeah. It just blends more. Okay. So like a stop sign, obviously, they're bright red. It's supposed to pop out. So there's just not the contrast between the two. Yes, yeah, so it just they're doesn't more... have the vibrancy and stuff. Kay. It's just hard to differentiate. That makes sense. But um, we go to where I shot him. Could not find blood. Sitting there walking up by the pond, can't find blood. Circle in there, can't find blood anywhere. Just surprising, man. With a pass through, if you did hit that femoral already, I'd think you'd be bleeding pretty quick. Yes, that's what I would assume too. Um, if not right away, chances are, as jacked up as I was, we could have been walking five yards from where yeah. he actually was. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that but, happens a lot. All of a sudden, you're walking over here and you cross over and you're like, oh, here's blood. And then the trail really was back this way. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, but where he walked out of that tree line, when I lost him, I knew just because of that bushy tree right yep. there, I knew 100%. Like, here's your marked spot. Yep. So we got up to that and not even five yards into walking that edge. Corey said, CJ. And I said, what? And he said, look at this. And he picked up a blade of grass that was probably eight inches long, and it was literally covered. And then he goes, you smell that? And I was like, yeah. He said, he's dead, buddy. He said, I don't know where. I said, but he's dead. So we're still looking in this tree line, looking out in this field. Like, what was he like, smelling? The told on that uh, <laughs> rutting buck for sure. And oh, got yeah. Shot. <laughs> yeah, just enough blood. He got optimism. Right? Yep. So we're both just sitting there looking, and we're walking the edge of these ponds. And uh, in between these ponds, there's a giant mound. I wouldn't say giant, but probably seven foot tall mound mm-hmm. with some saplings and stuff. So we're getting pretty close to that, and uh, I go to say something to him. I'm like, bro, like this is not looking good, and we're probably going to have to go knock on some doors and ask. Yeah, because you got 30 acres. Yeah, such. it's it's not a lot. And when I look over out of the corner of my eye, I see him laying dead right there by that mound, and I just smack him. I said, Corey, and he said, what in the hell did you just do? I mean, he runs up on this thing like a little kid's first <laughs> Halloween door. Just tickled to death. He's like, you so just- he just laid up against that that mound right by the pond. Yep, and he was he was stiff. He was pretty stiff. But honestly, the way he was laying, I don't think that's. I don't think he died there that night. I think he went on down and bedded up mm-hmm. and tried to hit that pond because mm-hmm. he was going and then in between. He just laid up. Yep. All right, can we can we bring him out now? <laughs> yeah, we can bring him out. Yeah. You want have your fiance bring him out? Yep. Go ahead, babe. Back there in that office. What the hell? <laughs> By far the oh my deer god! I've ever seen. What? <laughs> Bring it in here. What? Oh my goodness! Oh, headphones are falling off of me. Here you go, brother. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, for once in my life, I uh, guesstimated it on the low end, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Worked out very well. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's quite large. Would you say he weighed ten pounds? Uh, yeah, his uh, skull cap, his skull plate, I believe it was ten point four pounds. <laughs> yeah, I uh, water for you. I don't. That's unbelievable that something like that grew in the wild. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've been and not not to have nowhere near as much trash as you would as expect a deer to have with that, at that size yeah with that kind of real estate why is it so much bigger than just anything i've ever seen it it's almost 
It's insane. <laughs> That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. And dude, I don't understand how this happened to you. <laughs> the only, like, the only the, thing I, I can just, tell you. I'm trying to imagine this thing. Walking through the woods? Well, just leaving laying there dead. I can't imagine walking up on this. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it was. That's unreal. I mean, the, what a beast. I assume this deer had a giant body on him. Yes. Um, I would say field dressed. He was probably 265. So over 300 on hoof. It's like, I don't even know what I'm holding there. <laughs> He's got a little bit of everything to him, man. Yeah, I, I mean, man, dude, the mass on that thing between is, the forked eye guards and the way he paddles out up front. I, I don't know. I don't think it gets Like, that's much not better. even what I'm hunting. Like, that's like a different animal. I, I don't think any of us hunt a unicorn Boys, on the daily, you, usually. You ever heard of Bigfoot? I found him. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, dude, that is unreal yep and to not have anyone reach out it's been what what is the date today the 20th i don't understand that it's been 10 days i mean dude i literally bitched the other day i said every giant deer in this country is on somebody's camera somewhere they yep. know about them the the only thing i could think and like i and i'm not any professional hunter by any means not but apparently neither are we that, <laughs> that deer it had to have a very, very small home range. Yeah. I mean, there's no yeah. way it traveled very far its whole life. I mean, dude, somebody sees this here and is like, because oh, my God, a, it's a giant. Even at a three-year-old buck. You yeah, know, I he's mean, gonna he was be, a giant. He's going to be 180 inches at least. Um, Actually, real quick, um, on the trail camera and everything like that, Um, when I was – I was the one that caped him <laughs> because in order to get pictures, I didn't want just phone pictures. Sure. Corey's um, girlfriend – actually has like a very very expensive camera yeah but she worked super late that day mm -hmm. and was driving from 30 minutes away so sadly the pictures were night pictures but um, yeah we still knew how big it was dude yeah um when <laughs> i caped him out after that because my taxidermist i was gonna have him cape him out but i was like ah, i'll cape him back about halfway down to his neck there was a little scar on one part of his hide that looked like a tube blade expandable hmm oh yeah. wow so he's possibly been shot before possibly so that person's what, what out there about it listening like, to this. What about it looked like a two blade expandable? Um, it was a little cut, probably. Uh, I would say no more than two inches long. Are you kidding me, dude? And <laughs> it just looked like a big, big scar tissue, just right there, and it wasn't on the other side. And of you the think you, maybe it was from fighting? Maybe that's what I mean. How would you do? Distinguish that, between the two. Just like it being, you know how. Was it real thin? A rage, yeah. It would just remind me of what a yeah. blade hole would leave. Dude. What a giant. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even believe that. Yeah. Um, everyone's Everyone's been uh, asking. I. Like, I mean, I've held antlers like at farms Dude, I worked and stuff. In a, I worked in yeah. the pens. You held giant yeah. antlers up at Penn State with me. Yeah, that may maybe were this big, but just to fathom this thing out in the wood, I just can't. Ima I can't imagine yeah. that this thing was living out there in the wild. Yep. I mean, again, you know. You've seen right. He was living out there in the wild, right? Okay. Actually, boys, <laughs> it was we're a really thirty-acre <laughs> pen. <laughs> ah. <laughs> really? Well, that's what I said. It was thirty acres exactly. <laughs> really, what happened is <laughs> it's about a twenty-foot fence tied to crossbow. Slowly uh, climbed it. I Just mean, picked the best dude, wow. that this blading is, is ridiculous here too. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine turning around. Like, I, we, we were just in Kansas. Turned around, saw a 180, and I was like, oh, my God, mm -hmm. falling apart. Losing like, your mind. I can't imagine turning around and seeing a deer of this magnitude, let alone watching him for 30 minutes and trying to keep some sort of composure together. Yep. Oh, he definitely had no composure. I no. can go ahead and tell you that. Zero. Do you you have the teeth? Are you sending those in? Um, my taxidermist does. Is he gonna? You're gonna send those I in. I eventually am going to send those in. Yes. I mean, dude, what would you? What would you guess? How I, How old would a deer have to be to? to I mean, to throw a rack like that, he's got to be seven or eight. So I'm gonna say seven and a half. That's yeah. what my taxidermist threw yeah. out there, and that's what I mean. Because because at five, you know, he's gonna throw. The thing is, is you get into those weird situations. Most of the deer are gonna max somewhere around that five to six year old age class, but. 
what you end up seeing is deer throwing it. And, and first of all, it's because there's not a lot of deer that get past six and or that we know are older than six from an eight, whether we do, you know, the wear and replacement or we send the teeth off. But I think what we've seen, at least from a pen facility side, is that at seven, eight, and nine even, these deer can throw bigger racks. I think part of it is because they don't breed and rut as hard. So they control their resources more as they get into those those older. And I also don't think that they travel big home ranges. And so anything that controls their resources is going to give them more to the antler. Absolutely. If now, they're not getting injured during rut. Yeah. And- it's not like every seven and a half year old could look like this, though. I mean, this is like a combination of perfect genetics, uh, freak nutrition. And age. And age. Yep. I mean, I can't imagine that this would be a deer that people would pass on at two or three or four or five. I mean, I could could see on its head at three years old. I would love to know. I would love to know. I could see people. I bet he did. I bet he did have a massive blow up year. I mean, if I had to get, he probably. I'm sure this is his biggest rack. Yeah, I mean, I bet he was a a mega ten. I bet he was like a hundred and eighty inch class ten point, and then. Yeah, whether it was last year or this year. At so, what year, though? Like, I mean, because these. Do you put that kind of mass yeah, on? Yeah, those yeah. sheds I mean, exist somewhere. Is that from I four know. to five or that's five what to I was six? Yeah, I mean, back out there. Where do they, they even exist? Get out permission there. to go try to find some sheds off of them. I mean, they they exist. Yep. And they're not ate up. I mean, we've got those Kansas ones that were many years later that were heavy and just not. But Honestly, you would that find, Kansas buck, other than a farm bucks, is the closest mass that I've held, and it's not not that close. close. But I mean, that those sheds exist somewhat squirrel chewed somewhere. Yep. You know they're well, having Thanksgiving. I mean, feast they can time, eat a horn. I know they can eat a horn. It might be unrecognizable. Sure. Oh, well. Somewhat recognizable. Boy. Yeah, I think we would definitely know if he is. (laughs) I mean, the other thing is, too, uh, you know, especially now that he's out of there, there's probably a pretty damn good four or five or six-year-old that's That's his offspring. That's what I told him. I said, (laughs) said, if there's a deer like that, there's a bigger deer back there. Maybe not bigger, but there's Yeah, there's there's another big mature mature buck in there. That's the craziest thing. I mean... So in that area, though, CJ, I mean, is it, you obviously didn't see a ton of deer. I mean, are there a ton of deer in that area? Um, yes. Um, actually, when we were driving out that night <laughs> in an empty <laughs> uh, harvested agricultural field, there was a bunch of deer, like probably 20 plus deer. Because that's what I was going to say is like the other thing is, you know, the the less amount of social pressure, you know, pressure and things like that, that they have to compete against. I mean, there this is like a tornado of Everything like perfection. Right. Yep. Um, because I mean, we we talked about it. Just to get a deer to four or five is super hard. To get a deer to seven and or eight is and like have the genetics this deer. Yeah, had. it's damn near impossible. It, in a like, state like Ohio, that's got corn piles and crossbows. Not picking on those. It's just the odds of a deer making it through those areas. Unless you're talking about, you know, I I hunt in Columbus, which I do. There yep. are giant. 200 inch deer in Columbus, yep. but it's because there's 1600 acres of Metro park and 2000 acres of state that you can't hunt. Yep. So these deer just don't Sanctuaries. get, yeah, they don't get hunted Yep. and they've got good nutrition and then they put age on. Yep. This is a deer that, you know, on a small piece of property is surrounded by potentially hunted areas. I don't know what the freaking odds are of this thing, but it's dude with everything nuts. that's happened in my life in the past four years, I can the only explanation I could bring to this is divine intervention. I told you that on the phone. I was like, that's when you told me the story, I was like, dude, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know anything else but this. Like the fact that you took a climber, pumped up a tree, and this deer walked within seven yards of you, I don't un- I could never explain it. Yep. I mean, I'm lucky to see a doe. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just out here killing does, man. Honestly, the way the sit went, I was like, I'm, I'm. When I get home, I'm calling my dad. I'm pissed. I haven't seen (laughs) nothing all day. Tell him why'd you waste my time, pops? Yeah. The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Hoyt Archery. Oh, dude, it's almost fall. You and I are both going to be in a tree stand with brand new Hoyt bows. We're going to be shooting the RX-7 carbon bow this year. I know Hoyt's also got the Venoms out, both equally smooth shooting, quiet bows. Heck yeah, man. We got a convert on our hands this year. We got a lifelong crossbow guy with a vertical bow in his hands for maybe the first time ever, a good friend of mine. 
And uh, we've got them all decked out with uh, the inline accessories uh, from the QAD integrated ultra rest uh, to the quiver. And also he's got the SL sidebar mount with a couple of stabilizers from Hoyt as well. So that's going to be a sick shooting bow. Yeah. And Hoyt's been cool enough that anyone listening to this can save 20% on any of the soft good apparels online using the code HUNTER, H-U-N-T-R, no E. Uh, and if you want to look at the latest lineup of Hoyt bows, check out your local Hoyt dealer. Get serious, get Hoyt. It's hard to fathom. Oh, I bet you got a big, uh, I told you so on that phone call, didn't you? Absolutely. <laughs> what did your dad say? Um, when I sent him. I, did you call him that night? Um, I did, yes. Yep. And, um, and he, you said, hey, yeah. I shot like the biggest deer of my life. He said, I told you big ones. Big ones are out there, boy. He said, I told you. Listen He's like, yeah, there. that's all right. That one's all right. That one's a good one. I passed <laughs> a couple of them. I probably passed him in 1985. <laughs> <laughs> he might have. He might have. I think he's 22 years old. Um, hmm. When he first seen a picture of it, he was cussing up a storm, and he said, that's the biggest damn deer I've ever seen in my entire life. Agree. Um, I mean, that is ridiculous. Yep. Um, cool fact. I mean, you can. Uh, that, uh, it would be his left side. That's 112 and two eighths inch antler. That left side alone. So if that matched, obviously we have the controversy of that common base. Which, yeah, the common base here. If we look at it, you yeah. can kind of he, see. You can see that G3 going to that main beam. And if you turn him when you're looking at it, it's him very person, controversial. That's for sure. What? So what's controversial about it's it? It's the inside. It's, it's where the connection, like, does this point actually from the beam yep or does it originate from a common base on yep. the two? and in yep. and so what you have to look at is they they look at the grain of the antler right yep. so clearly this one does seem to come down and touch the beam right yep and, and if then you look this at the back side on of this the back side clearly does too yep mm -hmm. um it's just is that it's almost like palmation like yeah. he's, just it, so, he's so thick yeah. absolutely and if you feel um right and in, in a palmation deer this would be a two and a three yes and if you feel um mike rex was actually telling me about this i had no the idea the dimple the dimple yep you can feel a dimple that's in there. it yep yep i think so is, is is mike saying that he thinks it's a true two and three well um weirdly enough when mike came to the house and he was measuring it obviously that man's been around the block he said that's the biggest main beams he's ever measured on a deer in his entire life. And Mike killed a giant with like 29 or 30 inch Absolutely. beams. Absolutely. Gross 246 Ohio. inches. Um, I believe it netted 216. So he knows big deer. Yeah. Man's seen big deer. Um, he, <laughs> he said in his opinion, see, this is where things get weird. So Ohio <clears throat> Big Buck, they recognize. Um, B and C. Um, yes, and B and C recognizes them. And they go off the same standard, but with Ohio and Ohio Big Buck is different from Big Buck Masters, right? Well, there's yes. a Buckmaster BTR. Yes, which is what he's he's been already officially scored for that, and he's because there's no drying period. Yes, he's actually um, now the official world record for semi regular crossbow. He is yep. for semi regular semi regular. regular. Yep. So that would throw in the non typical points. Yes. What did I see us two forty four? Two forty four and six eights, I believe. So how is that different from the gross Boone and Crockett score? Which I know that's a contradiction in and of itself. <sighs> so where are those because Mike you, cause Mike got a gross two. non typical and a gross typical. Okay. Okay. So your gross typical has everything without deductions, but it does not include your non typical points. Okay. So it's really? still yeah, that's a gross typical. Gross typical. Okay. Gross non typical will be inclusive of everything. Okay. That's yep. that's my kind but of But if you score it as a gross non typical, then obviously we're now taking them out of the realm. And I mean there's, there's three hundred plus inch deer in the non typical category. Yep. Okay. So you don't probably want to be scored. I see. That's where Buckmasters has four categories. Absolutely. Okay. Um so oh, gross non typical is that's what we're used to. That's every Yeah, when you say, Hey, I killed a one seventy, it's gross non typical. Yep. Okay. So gross typical is would that include something like Yes, yes, that was included. That's, and Mike if, ended if up, it is. Yeah. If if it is, Mike um went ahead and scored it as a typical because he said we have a bunch of really good arguments. Um Yeah, it's a panel, it's subjective. Yeah. And he said uh with what he sees, he thinks that there's a very good possibility. And that would have put him at what? 235 and six eighths gross typical and net 206 and seven eighths and the current ohio state record is 201 and two eighths yep and so. your 206 would put you just behind johnson's 
be the third buck and third if, typical buck. If in it the held world. up in Boone and Crockett, which me and Mike talked about this, they're more of a glass half empty yeah, type yeah. organization. Oh yeah, dude. They they snub they're gonna, a lot. They're probably gonna eat this deer alive. Yeah. And they don't make they don't want records to be broken. I don't no, know why. That's why Milo's no there and Johnson's there. Yes. But the Huff Buck, you talked to Huff, right? I, I have talked to Huff, yep. Because he was what, two eleven? Two eleven, yep. Number two in the world. Boy, it's interesting. Like, I see what you're saying. Like, my initial looking at this, I'm like, it's clearly a common, but like, if you look at it, it's on like the rest of these times, they're coming out of the, I see what you're saying on the inside, especially mm -hmm. like, look at this from this angle. Jeremy. Oh yeah. I see it. I can see, I can follow the line, the, the, you know, the, the grain, you the grains of the tine, the which if so, then this becomes your H3 measurement. Yes, which right. is giant. Ten, 10 and 3 eighths. <laughs> Absolutely. 10 and 3 eighths? 10 and 3 eighths. However, I can't remember what I mean, the measurement I'm, was on that. I'm obviously not on the panel, or I'm not a, even a licensed scorer. You know. That's where it gets tricky on the backside. Well, see, in this, I'd say even is more clear to me that it would be a common base. base you know, because yep. they're clearly coming together up here. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting that... Did you get you look at the king buck obviously absolutely which this is the debate yep. right common common base in the king buck um and i mean that was the one that would have probably broken milo's record had it not had a common base yep um it's interesting how that common base thing <laughs> like just comes up twice like that on giant typicals within what six years of each other yep but um getting back to the ohio big buck thing I can have this scored as an Ohio Big Buck score, which I'm going to. Mm -hmm. January 13th, it'll be panel scored. That's your drying period up? Yep. Um, January 9th is the first time, but they want to do it on the weekend and yep. a, a few extra days. That's yeah, not who cares? Matter. And um, Mike's actually going to be the uh, moderator. Sure. So he's going to be writing everything down. If there's an argument to be made. He'll he, be able to be there. He green scored it. So yep. but you got this on this measurement. Well, this is what I did, and this is what I got on this measurement. Yeah, I mean, he he's not going to lose four inches in the drying period. No, absolutely no. not. No. He said Mike's lost 11 inches. But it was also killed October 1st, and he said there was still velvet yeah. drenched on the antlers. He said the antlers were pliable. Yeah. Like, literally oh, wow. could flex Yeah, there was them. that much water in them. Yep. So, he's yeah. crazy. 11 inches. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense on an early season. I mean, this deer's dry as bone probably at you, that point. You know what uh, Huff said? That's, his me, deer that's lost like me when I step outside nothing. in the winter. Huff's lost nothing. He did not shrink at all. What did you say? He? Eighth of an inch or something like Possibly that? Possibly an eighth of Wasn't an inch. Wasn't that October? But that could just be measurements. Yes. Yeah, that could be different measures. Yeah, hundred percent. But um, where, so where did he measure these from? Is I'm sorry, Jeremy. To pull yeah, no. So did he be, draw a line right like this? It'd be down here. Yep, Even absolutely. so, you draw yeah. a line straight across here, and then you would yep. measure them both from that. If that you line. consider that G three, if yeah, they're G3. if they're considered, if not, typical. then you draw a line straight down, straight across and then it. you make that as your non typical, yep. and this would be your G two. But if that's G three typical, it's fifteen and two eighths inches. <sighs> yeah. But um, he said we have a very good argument, and he really does believe that Ohio Big Buck is going to score this typical. Obviously, it's up to interpretation. Sure. So we could be wrong. Yeah, but, and I mean you'll lose yeah, some junk definitely. on this, and you'll. Yeah. I mean symmetrical, you're gonna lose some, especially that G. Yep. Potentially four, that five one on over there. On the other there. side is uh, thirteen and four eighths, I believe. So what would it be? What is it in the running for? Um, if it scores typical for Ohio Big Buck, it will then be real uh, recognized as the number one typical in Ohio. Does not matter. Period. Yes. N no weapon, I, regardless. At that point, if I go and score it B and C, they can then score it non-typical, and I can be in the books for a non-typical. Yes, and still hold the state rape record for typical. Tell me that ain't. Yeah, so that's kind of weird. To wait, me. wait, wait. Say, say that again. So, a high big buck. If they score this typical, yeah, it will be recognized. You could Google it, and this would be the state record. That would be what pops up. Okay. But Boone and Crockett could get a panel together, and score this, and rule that non-typical, and then it would be in the books of Boone and Crockett as a non-typical. Then you would have a non-typical that's technically a state record. Typical. As typical. A typical. So if it beats, yeah, beats the German buck or German buck, however you want to yep. say his name. As a typical? Which was the 201. Yes. Um, I don't know if you guys know this. 300, Mike is the one that told me this information. 300-inch um, or 200-plus-inch deer in Ohio. Do you know how many Ohio Big Buck has on the books? 300? Over 300. You know how many typicals they have over 200 inches? Two. Two. And Two. one of them was scored in the late 80s. And it was scored wrong. Is what so you, we wait, don't wait, really. I heard that wrong. 
there you said how many over 300 inches 200 i i got the okay, numbers there's mixed 300 up. deer over 200 inches 200 inches, inches non-typical okay. for ohio big but buck. only two typicals, typicals. yes yeah. and one of them's controversial because it was possibly scored what wrong. are the two um the contras buck which yeah. is actually technically stopped um tied can you pull that one up nick the for, contras and it's actually got a very c-o-n-t i think so you're asking someone who's horrible at spelling. A- c-c-r c-r-o-n c-o-n-t-r-a-s but it's actually tied for the state record okay they're both the same exact size and what's so the size? other one do you know Jermaine buck the it, Jermaine buck that's the one we were looking at yep no which no is no a 10 point that's the king buck with the common base yeah king yeah, buck. yeah 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 and uh the contrast buck has a uh, common base and he said that he's seen that deer in person and it is more controversial than that you know what's crazy is is if this deer didn't have let's say this is the g you know five technically yep if this deer didn't have that g5 you gained six more inches on a typical mm-hmm. scale yes and you'd be all over milo hansen yep so basically what my plan is is if this beats the state record don't get me wrong boone and crockett is obviously the most prestigious books you can nobody get. cares about that shit no <laughs> no absolutely not whenever you've got a until you inch deer in front realistically of you. look at things because i mean obviously i'm biased i look at the deer that's a typical deer uh, dude, it's the biggest typical deer I've ever seen. A hundred percent. And uh, yeah, he's got junk and character. Or, you know, you don't look at that deer and think non-typical. A hundred percent. No. So no, that's the biggest typical deer I've ever seen. Boone and Crockett, if they want to panel score this, is going to get told no if this beats the state record. Because at that point, I would. Yeah, no, I would. no one can deny that it's there's no a reason to be inch in there, dude. Typical anymore, and that you be the state Ohio typical buck, and that would be although you know. And this, I actually thought it was. We've talked about it numerous times. I I believe Ohio will be the place that the world record typical is killed. Yep. I, and when I saw this deer, I said, holy shit, there it is. Yep. Like, immediately thought that was it. See, oh, 100%. Well, whenever he sent me pictures, I was absolutely Do a little gawking. what ifs here. So, we say that left antler, it's 112 and 2 eighths inches. Yep. Say he matches on this side, and you got that on both sides. That then makes him... A 250 inch typical deer if you <laughs> rule that typical and nothing touches like yeah nothing comes if close. you look up the milo hansen deer um inside he's 27 and two eights yep my deer 27 and two eights i he's believe a- i believe his main beams were 29 mine are 32 and two eights and then you're looking at mass measurements <laughs> he didn't gross nearly as good as your deer right no because no. I, I was gonna say he didn't have the mass i could be wrong on this but i believe this is the highest Typical gross. gross. Yes. Yeah, I think I think Milo's deer was like two twenty one or something, maybe. Yep. yep. As a gross, typical. Yep. Like we get a bunch of we'll say so, five year olds in a room, and you put them in a room with a handsome buck, and you say which one is bigger. They all say yeah, the five year old with yep. the math. So if if we're looking at gross typical, we're sit, we're sitting at two thirty five. Yep. Two <sighs> two thirty five and six eights, I believe. It might it's be four mind blowing though. Yep mind blowing almost six inches all the way out to his tips i mean that last well, that's like, what i was gonna say three four inches you've got beams off. you've got spread you've got ridiculous mass you've got ridiculous i don't know there's literally there's nothing you could add to this deer besides symmetry yep that's it yep i don't know if you'll ever see a t- what was it 235 and seven my got yep on there's a, on a gross non-typical no gross typical gross typical so that's without without the junk that's those that yeah without these but with that correct because he scored that as typical oh my word so that's where your big buck is that's 244 with the junk that's your non-typical score there's no i mean i I don't know what this was i don't know we've wondered the same thing it looks like a trident yeah it may have been up here something brick killed a guy I saw that. He's probably going to hiding for a while. <laughs> Looks like he's got a little cedar or pine or something in that little yeah, crevice up there I saw on the top. over here to yeah. just rub the inside off. Dude, awesome. I mean, he still has these these downturns. I don't yes, understand. Yeah. Like, I don't think that there. I don't know if there ever will be a gross typical at almost two thirty six. That deer is unbelievable. I tell you what, I just even the oh character he has. Couldn't I imagine mean, he, this, but ten year old boy's dream come true, man. Blessing from God. Oh, you and mean being on the podcast or killing the deer? Both. Both. <laughs> both. <laughs> Freaking anybody's dream, dude. That is a giant wow, buck. Man. Yes. Well, I can honestly say, and obviously, <laughs> CJ, we've only talked to you for how many, you know, minutes and hours, but like, uh, happy for you, dude. I appreciate like, it. Uh, 
there are um, happier if it was me, but <laughs> yeah, definitely I think we all would have been. <laughs> but if it makes, you, if I'm it makes you feel any better, I don't honestly feel like I deserve this because I'm just an everyday dude. I've made a lot of fucking mistakes in my life, and I don't know. It's just I can't even comprehend it. It's still surreal. I still wake up and like, am I in a coma? Like, it's nuts, man. I mean, it's it, you know, honestly, there are people out there that throw millions and millions of dollars at things to try to make this happen yeah um which is what's I ironic about it absolutely funny topic i've been offered twenty thousand for it three times already really yeah doesn't surprise me and and then they'll make you a, a replica yep <laughs> but i was telling i was telling jeremy about our conversation yesterday and granted i don't did huff, did i'm huff not sell in the his? he did i thought he did to that Deer guy trade. did he to that guy yeah yeah, I thought and he did. I asked his opinion, and he said he's a very good dude. Like, he seems genuinely like he's a good dude. And Mike said the same thing, but I'm not going to speak names or anything like that. But the way it came off to me is, okay, so telling me that it's going to get ate up by a panel. I've had everyone that's offered to buy I've this thing. yeah. Yeah, and they're like, it's going to maybe net one, 180 when the panel hits it. I'm like, I don't even know how you get those numbers because I've done the numbers, and it's still in the 190s, even with that yeah. common base stuff and all from that. From a typical side. Yes, from a typical side. But the thing is, is if you buy it from me now, say he offers me $100,000, and then he takes it to Ohio Big Buck, knowing what me and Mike know, and it a typical gets yep. a score to typical yep that, becomes the state record that deer if it is in fact the biggest gross typical that there is is literally worth what mike said a fortune so well that's what i'm saying is to like, who like to what i'm curious about there's dude, the, we were talking about like what are horns worth the collectors out there are insane yes you know and you i mean mind shut that light off in that room you please. even have places like um you know, well, like Bass Pro, King of Bucks and stuff. Like, those guys pay a fortune for stuff. But well, there's but you, private you collectors. Said earlier, not much, right? I thought I thought Huff got, and maybe I'm wrong, I thought Huff got like 30 I, or Relatively 35. not much. Yeah. <laughs> it's, who are they the worth the most to? Is it collectors? Is that who yes. horns are worth the most to? Well, and then Other than the guy that shot them? You know? They're going to show them off. Yep. Where? Just in, in their collection? Instagram? Shows. Yeah, maybe their, their collection. This dude, know. for example, I could be wrong. Um... I believe he owns the most prestigious, biggest whitetail collection in the world. Yeah. I is mean, that like a sporting good shop? Is it shop or something? Mm, it's his personal collection, but there are some of them. Uh, for example, the original Huff Buck, it's in Springfield, Missouri. In yeah, at Bass Pro? Yep. 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 So, basically. So, I assume he bought it, and then he struck a deal with Bass Pro. 100%. Absolutely. Licensed it or leased it to well, him. Which he said, if I did decide to do that, that I would get a replica and any proceeds that are made from the deer basically he would be my agent and be putting it out there to get me stuff and mm -hmm. Interesting. i would get the money but to me man if that deer is worth so much more than money don't get me wrong with the financial stuff and everything like that it's it's the memories man i could pass this down to my sons oh dude and i mean stuff that's like a that uh, forty thousand dollars I mean, I mean, that's let's be realistic. In today's world, that didn't it, even last it me a year. Do anything, yeah. I'm 28 years old, and I'm a, I'm a guy. I'm, I'm kind of dumb sometimes. So, you just, you could add a zero to that, and I still well, really would. There's, hard it on. would be hard. Yes, there are things in, you know, whether it's like, I mean, obviously, you know, Ohio Deer and Turkey Expo type stuff. Like, there are places people would flock to see this. Thing. Absolutely. Um, Anytime, sell tickets. There'd Five be places years down the road. People are going to be wanting to see this deer. There's places that dude, people would want you to come in and just tell the story again. The gun, you know, with the deer there. Yep. The gun shop where I uh, had it scored. Um, it's around Springfield, Ohio. Yep. yep. Um, when Ed Wait scored it. Um, super nice man, by the way. One of, I was getting a lot of back and forth between him and Toby, and mm -hmm. Toby is also a great guy as well, but Ed got a hold of me first, and I talked to him first, and I gave him my word. That hey, he could you're, you're around. I can be there Friday. He could be there Friday. And through this whole process, that's that's my main thing. I don't want to sacrifice my character, so I took it up there. But there was four people, four or five people in the shop when I got there. When I left, there was probably thirty five. And I bet everyone was sitting there looking at it and talking to me and like looking like they wanted to grab. It. I'm like, pick it up. You want me to take a picture of you with it? Like to me. I do actually. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, dude, I'm just you know. That's what it's about. 
I just can't imagine selling this thing for thirty thousand no. dollars. No, not it seems like if I if I was sitting here, if I killed this thing, I'm like and not that making money is uh, you know, obviously that's an after, but hey, we all got to make money, right? And and like you said, you made four thousand dollars last year. You got to produce an income at some point. Absolutely, sure seems like if I had this thing and I was a sole person that had it, I could figure out a way to make more money to than make forty thousand, more than thirty or forty thousand dollars. Yeah. Hundred percent, you would yeah. hope so. I mean, even just going to expos and even with just by, even your story, dude. Itself. Whoever you know, what I mean, people just want to hear the story. Say, hey, I'll come, I'll bring the deer, I'll tell the story, I'll tell you about you know. Yep. my experience with hunting and stuff and it's i mean dude it's inspirational you know i mean the fact that you came and told us is pretty cool but oh i definitely think like sporting good shops would say yeah cj come down bring the deer tell a story whatever will pay a grand or two grand or yeah. whatever well i threw a number at you yes I, I don't know i was just in the car with my wife i was like dude i wouldn't sell a thing for less than a quarter million dollars <laughs> uh, me and my fiance actually <laughs> talked because and jeremy when i told that to jeremy he's like you're an idiot he's like no it's, i would never <laughs> but well, i just you know that's a lot of money <laughs> yeah is, no doubt it, it is a lot is. of money but okay four kids you figure they if they do all want to go to college good mm-hmm. lord will and i can send them is two hundred fifty thousand dollars going to do that? Buy no. me a house, buy me a new car, buy her a new car. Like, in the grand scheme of things, yes, that is a lot of money, but we can't take it with us. And everyday hunters, I'm just a normal guy. I want people to be able to enjoy this. Yeah, if I make some money off of it and can better my family, awesome. But I want people to pick it up. I want people to hold it because at one time we were all that ten year old boy going out there with our dads, our uncles, our brothers and dreaming of something like this. And I believe that's the sort of attention it deserves. I just, I don't understand. Hell yeah, man. That's just wild, man. What a mega giant. Magnum. <laughs> magnum. That's a magnum. <laughs> they don't get any bigger than that, dude. Well, yeah, I mean. So what know. do they call this, the Alexander Buck? Uh, oh, do you get to name it? They name it after you, right? That's what they call it. Yeah, because it's been yeah the Huff if, Buck. If I didn't Hanson Buck didn't name it, yeah, but it'll be the Alexander Buck. Uh, I was, which I didn't realize how common of a name it was this was for deer, but Megatron is what I had. Megatron, just because oh, he's yeah. a mega giant. Mm-hmm. Megatron. Yeah, yeah, Alexander he's definitely Buck. Megatron. That's got a good sure. to it. There oh, are no other Alexander. Alexander Bucks. the Great, maybe. There you go. I like <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, that's um, wow. It's unbelievable. Yeah, when we go, it well, no matter how many times you look at it, either it like it don't get any smaller. When that picture, been, were, have you been sleeping with us? Uh, Be honest with me. <laughs> pretty much. Okay, so uh, it's been in your bed at least one night, right? At, not in our bed, but on our dresser, and it literally completely goes from end to end. We have a. I think I'd wrap it around my rib cage and just <laughs> naked, <laughs> naked, and just <laughs> just spooning it. I, I just. Mm. <laughs> I don't think the old lady. She yeah, yeah she loves me, but I'm well, she leaves every once in a while, right? That's your, true. your tine is digging into my hip. <laughs> like, <"Ooh>, that's <laughs> that's my God. Get that G three out of my hip, babe. Uh-huh. I don't remember. That's a fifteen inch tine, babe. Yeah, yeah. She would know it's not you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep. So for inner oh. sorrow and uh, turmoil, I leave it on the dresser, and it literally it goes oh. from end to end on that mirror. I mean, dude, it's as big as our table. Yeah, it's... I can't imagine that deer walking through the woods like that. Yeah. My taxidermist, actually, I'm sure you guys know who the Beatty deer. That was oh, good yeah. In Ohio. Yeah, Charles yeah. Beatty. Yeah. Do you know where he kept that deer? Uh-huh. Isn't it? In a bank that's vault. That's not the Prince of... No, that's different oh, okay. Beatty. All right. He kept it in a bank vault. He did? Yes, and when I brought it into my taxidermist um, out in True Mounts, it's in uh, Hillsboro, Ohio. Dude does absolutely fantastic work. A very, very good down-to-earth dude. He said, honestly, CJ, he said that probably wouldn't be a bad idea with this. Oh, the, dude. The area I live in. I, our tax service keeps stuff in a safe. You got a big safe in there. Yep. Um, People will, oh, dude, a deer like that? Our apartment mm-hmm. complex, um, it was about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. The parking lot over from our building, a 13-year-old got shot from another 13-year-old over mm. a weed pen. Sounds about right. Yeah. Nick, get your damn... <laughs> vape out over there <laughs> nick <laughs> I, I, pretty, pretty direct i can't shit on you nick because i me. vape too me, me either yeah no dude i would i would lock that thing up yeah. for for sure i went ahead and put about six inch long wood screws through my dead bolts and stuff like that so yeah you're coming through my door if anything and if you do that there's i'll just don't <laughs> it's already over, over with yeah. <laughs> it's already over with by that em? time huh you want to tape them yeah we're obviously not qualified but it'd be fun okay 
The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Muddy and Stealth Cam Trail Cameras. Cell cams, cell cams, cell cams. What an evolution the industry has seen and we've experienced personally over the past five, ten, you know, whatever cameras were invented, right? It's like, man, it's totally changed the way that we inventory deer, pattern deer, and ultimately the decisions that we make when we're going out to hunt. They're a serious piece of the puzzle and, and uh, you know, that information is invaluable for us. We trust the Muddy and Stealth Cams, you know, together to be able to, to collect any of that information. Yeah, I mean, as an admitted trail cam addict, you know, I've definitely been guilty of of under hunting places or relying too heavily on that information that's come in that said it's an invaluable tool to the overall management plan and strategy that i have for my own properties or even hunting public land it doesn't matter we have a finite amount of time in going out and hunting so when you and i are after a particular class or quality of deer usually a mature buck we can't waste time hunting an area where that deer doesn't exist. And those cell cams provide that information that allow us to spend the time in the area with the highest chance to accomplish our goals. Say it all the time, man. They can't kill them if they're not there. That's it. So right now, any of our listeners can use uh, code HUNTER20 to get 20% off either muddy or stealth cameras. Uh, we're certainly going to be taking advantage of that, and we hope you guys do too. Yep, check out Stealth Cam and Muddy. Wrap up the pod with a score. All right. That's the plan? Yeah. And so we'll start with the disclaimer. I'm not a licensed scorer by any means. You're not either, correct? Your wife is? Uh, yeah, which I don't Technically. know. Technically. I was talking to her today. I don't know if hers are still valid or not because she hasn't scored in a while, but she okay. is. She was licensed with Boone and Crockett. So the, this uh, is not an official score at all. This, this is, is the, for, uh, for us for fun. This is the uh, Hunter score? See what we can get here. 330? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. yeah, we'll see. Interesting enough, um, how we got a hold of Mike Rex, we... Uh, have a guy who used to be his brother used to be the mayor of Cincinnati and he married my mom and dad um I end up getting an attorney just just in case you never know was for this deer well more so <laughs> for like people trying to buy it if I do decide to go that route sure. review the contracts and stuff. stuff like that um he reached out to someone which ended up being Mike I believe and Mike called my mom and she's like he's like so you think he's got a record deer and she's like it's pretty damn big and he said, it's pretty damn big. do you have a picture of it? And uh, she said, yeah, and sent it to him. And he said, wow, okay, um, yeah, <laughs> I need to get a hold of yeah, him. Yeah, that's a big deer. Um, she, he asked who scored it, and she said, my son. And he said, what did he get? And I was actually, I got 207 and 6 eighths, so I was 7 eighths inches off. That's pretty good. That's yeah. awesome. Not too bad. Well, okay, let's see what we can get here. Jared's going to squeak another eighth inch out for you. Yeah, I'll see what I can find for you. Honestly, you may have to help me. Some of this is, uh, you know, I've never scored an antler like this, so we may have to work around it. But so it's smallest circumferences are always the smallest point yep. in that circumference yep. piece. So. so on that right, boy, there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got seven and an eighth on that one. I think that's the smallest point? Yeah. On your right side. I think that one's going to be, I'll give you... Uh, five and five eighths. Some bitch is beefy. <laughs> Six exactly. Does it get to watch your deer get scored? By the podcast I've been watching for <laughs> two years, hours on end. That's hilarious, dude. Luckily, I didn't have to find a small puddle and try to drown them in it. Were you surprised so. when I wrote uh, you back? Uh, <laughs> Was I surprised what? When I wrote you back? Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I got a message instantly. <laughs> so I give you a five and uh, seven eighths. Okay. One, two, three. That's my fourth. But yeah, dude, we literally were driving to go get beer. And uh, yeah. he's like, dude, you won't believe he just wrote me. So I'm going to the lowest point on the pedicle there. Is that where Mike? Uh, yes, I believe right in that corner. Yep. Yep. And we go right on the top of it, correct? Correct. That's where the biggest discrepancy typically comes from. It's like an uh, it can be an inch to inch and a half in a lot of cases. Yeah, um, BTR actually had it about an inch shorter than what Mike got it. Yep, that makes sense. And it goes on the outside of that beam, which is beefy. Mike actually uh, measured the main beams like uh, three times over. Each I bet because he was like, I "There's gotta, no way I got to do this again." <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Whew. She just keeps going. 29 and 6 eighths exactly. About the same. That's exactly what I got the first time. Okay. At least, at least I'm consistent. All right, I'm going to keep going here. Mm hmm. We'll do our G1. Yeah, which one are you going to do? This guy. Which one? 
I mean, we got to do them all, right? Yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying, which one are you gonna? If if that's gonna be your, we're doing gross. Oh, we're gonna do gross, non typical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or gross typical. Yeah, I guess that's gonna be your brow. Yeah, this is this one and this one. Yep, for sure. Yep. Okay. Because this does have common base or common down to the name yep. as well. So we just gotta. Get I could see somebody reading that as a typical and counting this as a non typical. The hard part is finding the the line because it's shared here. Yeah. Yeah, the first time I measured it, I measured that wrong. I measured it where the split was to the top. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. And I got four inches. I was like, man, that's kind of wild. If 200 inch deer having four inch brow tines. Yeah, no, they're, <laughs> they're giants. Yeah, so this and this is where it's gonna have shared, you know, shared base stuff in terms of measuring your non typicals and things like that. Yep. Well, I'll say uh, I want to make sure because if if this was my deer and it wasn't going for a book or something, I just I'd score it all. Mm -hmm. Are we doing that? Sure. And is that what should get us the two thirty five? Is that what Mike got or that's no 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 two thirty five would not include that's gonna any get us two forty four. Yes. Let's tape it all. Okay. Let's tape it all. Let's tape it all. Right. Okay. Those are going to be non-typicals, like on this side here. Okay, well, let's start with our typical points then. Okay, which will get year 235. All right. So I'm going to come to our base here. Uh, this is the first year ever scored on a podcast. Just out of 158 podcasts, this is the first year that's been worthy of scoring on the <laughs> well, table. Well, we absolutely appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> We just I'm haven't sure. shot anything worthy of being <laughs> scored. I'm sure he appreciates more than me, but I'm just glad to be here. Yeah. This I'll is... give you an eight and five eighths. Yep. All right. Which, for the record, is not a giant G2. No. no. For the record. For the record. <laughs> and is this on the record, Nick? <laughs> for the record, you're a little bitch. <laughs> All right, 12... And uh, six eighths. Yeah, that's a big three. <laughs> for the record, <laughs> that's a big three. That one's all right. That one's good. Uh, you know what the other thing this deer has that we always bitch about? Never, it never is worth anything. Tine mass. Yep. Some bitch is thick. <laughs> yep. Like that's every time you kill a big deer, you're like, that doesn't matter. Yeah. That G four right there that he's missing. That's insane, thick, man. man. That's some kielbasa hanging off the mm -hmm. horn. Damn branch. That's what I was thinking. You know, how did he even maneuver through the woods? Yeah. I would assume he made some big ass rubs. Carefully. Yeah. Carefully. I bet that deer just didn't. He didn't move when he didn't need to move. Mm hmm. Just imagine what another buck thought about him. I mean, I would assume um, there's. Get the hell away from they me. They definitely ain't touching him. There's potentially some broken bucks around. 10 and 1 8. Big four. All right. Let's jump to the left side. Okay. Yeah. I didn't do mass on this yet. Nope. Let's scratch our table up, but I don't care. It's okay. My kitchen table got it, too. I don't care. So what even got you guys into wanting to start a podcast anyway? <laughs> uh, we basically just talked all the time anyways and just didn't record it. That sounds about right. I so mean, we, would, we probably would sit here and just drink coffee and not work because Jared worked for me. And okay. so we would just bullshit and talk. And then eventually we're like, we should like record this at some point. Funny thing is, is he's actually talked about starting a podcast before. And that's one of the main reasons you I should invited do it. him. I'll oh, help you guys. Um, I was I've like, been, yeah, we'll get you set up. Yep. I mean, I've been watching Joe six, for six years. and three eighths. Six and three. And I don't know. I just, I really like getting the insight on people, like trying to understand how their brain works, mm -hmm. trying to, you know, pick, just pick their brain. That's why I was kind of wondering, you know, what got you guys, what what made you initially want to start doing a podcast? Basically what me and you do while you're <laughs> yeah. at work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the other thing was, is like at one, some point along the line, we said there's got to be other people like us out there. That, five and five eighths. That are just like eight up with it all the time. And so we just said, well, let's find them and talk to them. Yep. Oh, 100%. Because by the time deer season rolls around, 
If you're going to do it right, it's going to be in between. If you're going to do it Mike Rex way. Okay, so we're going to call it a typical. We're going to call that okay. a typical. I think that's what you got to do I don't, for now. Okay. So that's where you're going to get this abnormally large. <laughs> See, if it were so mine, if it were mine, <laughs> I would probably not if you know without asking anybody, without knowing, I would just say, okay, well, that's it's going to be one of those is going to be an atypical point. Yep. I'm obviously on your side here. The, the, I want it. I want it to be, but I don't. I'm not the guy to ask. The 100%. first time no, no, I kidding. taped it, um, I actually got 227 gross, and that's because I measured right where your hand is for the. That mass measurement or your third as well. one, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, Jeremy, how do you? What do you even do here? Like, do I come straight down on it? Does it have to be yeah. flush? Uh, it should be flush. It's okay. super hard with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then it's going to be ten and two eighths. Yep. And then your fourth is going to be. I don't get more thick than that, Nick. <laughs> That's mass. Six exactly. Okay. And we'll get a G one. <clears throat> For uh. Shits and gigs, uh, Jared. You want to go ahead and uh, tape, tape that mass measurement right there. I know it doesn't count towards it, but this one. Yep. Mm. Just give people an idea. So that would be the past. G well, it could be also depending yeah. on how he's going to score. It'd be your fifth mass measurement, the one that's usually two and three quarters on an eight point. Yeah. Or on a ten point. I guess ten point it would be. Yeah, it's usually two on an eight point. That is five. <laughs> Five and I'll give you a six eighths. Yeah. So I mean it's a yeah. Some deer's bases. Uh, I'll give you a five and five eighths. Yeah. Five and five eighths. Yeah, I just killed what I thought was the most massive deer I've ever killed before, and it was five and a half inch bases. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can get this brow tie going here. Can you hold that right there, Siege? Yep. Hmm. He's hard to maneuver. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, well, there's just so much horn everywhere. <laughs> He's awkward. I just like, can't believe that. Getting him in and out of the car is even a challenge. I, it fit in your trunk. I don't understand, dude, Barely. how you hundred percent how you tripped on this thing. Like, <laughs> I just it's, it's mind boggling to think of like how deer hunting is today. Yeah, five and six eighths, which is awesome. Well, I mean, I'll be honest. When he told me about it, I thought he was full of shit. I mm. mean, in all honesty, I knew. He I has a bit of a track a, record. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I knew it was a big deer. No, I knew by the way he was talking, it was definitely a good sized deer. Didn't you already score that one? Did you score? Oh no, you didn't. No. Okay. So you left two. Yep. But boy, when he sent me the picture, I was like, okay. <laughs> Fair <laughs> okay. enough. I remember seeing the picture and like literally the first words were like, holy shit. It's funny because I don't have a Facebook. I deactivated mine like four months ago. Good probably. For you. Um better for it. Yes. Um, Twelve my, and three eighths. I posted it to my Snapchat story and my Instagram. Literally, once I got the pictures, instantly Exploded. posted it. And uh, the next day, he asked me. He said, "You care if I share it on a Tennessee Deer Hunter um, page?" He said, mm -hmm. "I say all the time." He said, "I just kind of want to show it off." And I was like, "No, I don't care." And everybody was absolutely. Going I can't believe crazy. what it did. I mean, yeah, the Tennessee boys were probably like, "Damn, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, the high fence." Oh, I was gonna say, there they come. Yeah, yeah high fence. fence. Okay, so I don't know if you guys have like ever just been sitting there on social media. You'll get in on a very controversial thing. Oh yeah, and see people arguing. That's literally the story of our life. That is what the purpose <laughs> of this podcast is. <laughs> <laughs> I have been that person before, sitting there arguing. Back that off to two eighths. Uh, I've been that person, like, comment back, like, you don't know what you're talking about. Yep. And he was reading me stuff last night and just <laughs> what people say to each other over this deer. I was I was literally crying. Oh, uh, yeah, dude. Our comments are overwhelmingly in agreement. They're like, you guys are you know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, I thought you were going to say, you guys are pieces of shit, because that's usually what they are. No, <laughs> I've, I've learned a lot listening to you guys. You guys are definitely That's probably not a far. good thing. My... Yeah. Although somebody wrote, I'm coming all the way to the bottom with this one. Okay, right? Yeah, somebody wrote. Um, I guess it was during the live chat. They're like, "Oh, listen to you guys kill my biggest buck. It's like a 220 or something." I'm like, "What the hell are we doing wrong? <laughs> what do you mean you learned from us hunting in the wrong place? Yeah, probably. Um, I'd say my top four are probably. As far as podcasts, you guys are definitely number one. For a hunting podcast, absolutely. Well, oh, I mean, I'd expect sure. you to say that. So. Um, <laughs> no, I tell you. I would bullshit no, you. Yeah. Who else do you listen to? Don Higgins. Okay. I just found and, you an extra uh, inch, bud. I appreciate that. <laughs> what? <laughs> little slide of the... I wish the fiance could. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, um, so Higgins, okay. Yep, Higgins, and uh, I can't think of his name that does it with him. Terry. Terry, yes. Yep. Um, Josh Bomar, I follow him very closely. Mm-hmm. Uh, does he have a podcast? He does not, but I watch his uh, oh, yeah, yeah, actual yeah. stuff and his like broadheads. Yep. Yep. Uh, when Josh I seen him on you guys, like when you guys had him on, and he was talking about those broadheads, do you know how long? I was checking the internet for those, and then they drop, and I'm like, no way I'm ever getting a pack of these broadheads. <laughs> no. <laughs> no way. No. I think they sold out pretty quickly, too. They keep doing it, which they look, I, I'd be interested to Yeah, they look try sick. Them. Yeah, because typically I shoot, um, last year I shot that eight with uh, one of those NAPs. They almost look like a Rage, but yeah. obviously yep. without the Kill band. zone. Kill zones, yeah. Yeah, and I'm not a huge fan of that just because of how much force it takes to, to deploy open it, it up. Um, this year I was going to shoot G5 Mega Meats, mm-hmm. but because Corey has an ex- Excalibur, he has Excalibur. 15 and an eighth. <sighs> Excalibur bolts, Excalibur rod heads. He said that's just the way I've always done it. And so Yeah, I over. mean. I've heard really good things about those six-blade Excaliburs. I have. Yeah. The, the Mega Meat, I know I, Rising yeah. shoots those. Yeah. We shot we shot um, the Rage Tri-Pants yes. for a long time. When I first started getting into hunting, those yep. original Rages. A hundred percent. All over I, this. I think that's where everybody went. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then that's you know, so we were it's looking. A great broadhead. We were looking for something those. like that, maybe more durable and stuff. And so that's where the severs came in. I've looked into those too. Build. I like how you can buy those singly. Yeah, individual. That's mm-hmm. give you eleven exactly. That should be something that other broadhead companies look yeah. into. Doing. No, they've been solid. I mean, we we weren't sure. Jerry killed that one in North Dakota with it, um, and crushed, then. Yeah. Several bucks with him this year. Yeah, and then I killed the one in Illinois with it. And then he killed his in Illinois with it. So I mean, yeah, they've 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 been awesome. Um, ben Rising as well. You mentioned him. Yeah, I watch Whitetail Edge quite yep. a bit. So you know, Ben, Don, us, just big buck killers. Six yep. exactly. <laughs> yep. Six. Yeah, I had that. Absolutely. No. When it gets wait what? Six exactly. Yeah. Yep. You need to main beam on that side. You haven't done. Yep. Okay. When it gets to be about July, it goes from ball to deer hunting. And that's about all that stays on our TV in our bedroom. Lucky you. Deer hunting. She falls asleep to me watching people kill big deer. (laughs) So romantic. Yes. She falls asleep to me watching. Every once in a while, we'll get a movie in. (laughs) Every once in a while. Every once in a while, yeah. Hey, but sometimes I do the dishes and I cook dinner a lot. I just, uh, that's hard to believe, dude. That is just such a monster deer. I don't understand. Uh, I think that's what God was thinking. He's like, you know what? This guy can make a pretty mean steak, and he does dishes for his old lady every once in a while. We're going to send him a (laughs) freaking giant. (laughs) How do you cook a steak? A little S&P down the hatch? um, Weirdly enough, a lot of people use grills and stuff like that. And I do like grilling steaks, but I prefer fillets. And what I do is I preheat the oven to 225, and I will spray the pan, and I will put it in the oven for 40 minutes at 225, Mm -hmm. and then take it out, let it rest for about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And depending on now that I'm not into the gym like I was before I had all these kids and stuff, I would used to use zero calorie spray, but now I use butter and I'll take some seasoning. Mm. So like, um, I think it's Kinder's yep. is the name of it. Yep. Um, buttery steakhouse. Yep. I'll sear that butter, get it nice and hot, mm-hmm. boiling, Just put some of that seasoning in it, some garlic powder, mm-hmm. mix it up. Um, after they rest, I'll throw them on there for, depending on how you like them. I like my medium rare, but she likes hers more done. I'll throw mine on for like a minute and a half on each side. Mm-hmm. And then hers about three, and then I'll let them rest again. 30 and three-eighths is what I got on that. Beat. Where the hell are you losing two inches at? Where's Mike gaining it is what I want to know. Yeah. Hold that again, Heath, or somebody. Yeah. I mean, that's that's your lowest point right there. That's There is no way to confuse that. Boom. Right on the top of it. Right in the groove. Did Mike start at the eye socket whenever he got it? Uh, he said something about the corner of the eye socket. but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not a thing. Yeah, it, I, he he was saying in reference, though, not starting from the eye socket. Um, I'm sure when you guys talk to him. Here, I'm, I'm going to bring it out here as much as I can. Right there, that is the bottom. And it's got to come right through there. What do you got? 30. I'll give you 30, and that one is 6 eighths. Okay, so you gave him 3 eighths. 
So I believe that's pretty close to what I got when I scored uh, okay. scored it the first time. So that'd be our uh, Mike was getting other me than extra with extra. spread. Yeah. So I'm just saying from that without spread, Jared's got you at two a one and seven eights, yep. which is low. Okay, for the record, Nick. For the re- for the record or against somebody that has it against spread? Mike's okay or better judgment. Well, and Mike obviously knows way better than I do. He's got a kit. You're not kitting it. I bet it's lower down on that side. It's got to be. It's got to be parallel to the skull plate. Yeah. Can't be on an angle. I'll give you twenty. I mean, twenty six and like twenty seven exactly is what I'm getting. Yeah. 27 exactly is what I got. That gives you 228 and 7 eighths. Yep. Gross typical. That's pretty close. Wow. Uh, and that's a l- couple inches less than you got. And uh, Mike got two. When I met Mike got 35, right? Yeah. Um, the first time I scored it, like I said, I did the brow tines right there where they split. Yep. And I got 227 and some eights. And then when I redid it, I think I got 231 and like four eights. What did I five get? Eights. 228. 228 and seven eights. Yeah. So the first time I scored it, that's uh, literally exactly where I was. It'd be interesting to see how Mike scored it we to can gain it seven inches. Yeah. Well, and I'd take Mike's score over mine, certainly. I sure. Mean, yeah, I mean, he scores a lot of deer. I just do a Mars in our garage, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, but it's cool, cool to learn yeah. how guys do it. I mean, the fact stuff. that this deer's got 30-inch beams, seven-inch bases, <laughs> has a... a 15 inch G3, multiple 12 inch plus tines, and a 27 inch inside spread. Well, the biggest difference was Mike had two extra inches on each beam yeah. than, than mine. And then an extra inch over a BTR. Did I send you the picture of the BTR score sheet? Yeah, you did. That's what I thought I did. Yep. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know where, how he picks that up. Yeah. So, I'd I mean, love to see it. Are they going to, are they going to, uh, like live stream, like Facebook Live, the scoring or anything? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. I mean, I don't I- want that pressure. Because the big thing is with a lot of these coming from that low point is it comes back up to the backside of these beams and then it follows that grain yeah. the whole way up. And yeah. I mean, you know, on a 20 inch beam, it doesn't make, you know, it's an eighth to a half inch. But on a 30 inch beam, it might be an inch, or inch and a half, yeah. depending on Maybe how you come up at. around yeah. on these backsides. Mm. Um, Still Magnum. Oh, definitely. I do think yeah. that I do think that we're looking at probably the largest gross typical buck ever taken. <clears throat> yeah, I truly believe so too. Uh, Th- this is, I mean, this is what brings the uncertainty. I'm not worried with, about the with any weapon. Stuff. With any weapon. Yeah, yeah. This is what brings the uncertainty. Right. Of course, the one I shoot with a a crossbow has to be this one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what you'll always be known for. <laughs> hey, but at least it was seven yards. I could have rode him back to the house. Yeah. Huff killed his with a crossbow, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a magnum, dude. Just <laughs> unreal. Blessing from God, for sure. No doubt. Not sure how else to describe it, man, to be honest. Like, it just... Uh, well, like you were saying earlier, the the way the stars aligned that day... It don't get any better than that. Well, it, it, you know, we talk about this a lot on here is that the fact that, you know, how how targeting of deer has become like everything in deer hunting. Yep. I mean, you know, 20 years ago, you didn't know what buck you were going out to kill. Like maybe you saw him when you're out hunting and maybe you came across with them. But, you know, today, like when you go out and hunt, very rarely do people not have a, oh, this is my target buck. Or it, just even in their head, this is the buck I want to kill. Yep. Um, you know, are there surprises? Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, in Kansas on public land now, we can't use cameras. So when I turned around and saw a 180, I'm like, holy shit, I don't know who that is. It's a giant. Yeah. So you're Clearly not allowed not. to use cameras on public land? Not in Kansas anymore. Yep. Wow. This is year one of that, mm-hmm. I think. I think so too. Yep. So w- what's the reasoning behind that? Privacy. 
Really? People taking dumps in the woods. <laughs> screwing in the woods. They don't have their wow. pictures taken. And I bet okay. they... Understandably. They, Touche. Yeah, but I mean... They won't be <laughs> the last. It, it'll keep coming for sure. Find the house. <laughs> because uh, it's not against... <laughs> like, enough. if you look at the anti-hunters and the hunters fighting against it, throw them out of the mix. It's the mass public is the, the non-hunter. Right? They're not against hunting, but they're not for hunting. But they are for privacy. Yep. And so that's who's going to swing the votes every time. <sighs> Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, I see it happening more and more. Well, but it, what I'm saying there is, like, the targeting aspect of things has gotten, to me, a, a bit out of control. I mean, obviously, and for great well, reason you see it, this buck ten is minutes cool. Ago, you just said if I got a trail camera picture of that, I would quit my job. <laughs> I'd quit my job. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I probably would, too. <laughs> yeah. I quit, yeah, quit my job and I'd hunt every day. But it, it's... If you look at something like this, the fact is, is there are a lot of giant bucks, probably not this big, that people know about right now. They're hunting right now. They 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 know they exist. That they're out there. Yep. The fact that you walked out there blindly and that this deer existed in that, I don't know what the odds of that, but it's it's very very small. It's like hitting the Powerball. Yeah, I was gonna say, let me walk out to you guys' parking lot, find a thirty dollar ticket that. that's got twenty grand laying. I'm winning on it. That's like I mean, 20 mil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for sure. It, dude. I mean, it could be less than that. For that to be the biggest gross non-typical de- or gross typical deer, you're saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, what are the chances? I think that? it is. I think it is. It, I don't when think the drying period would be over, s- if Boone and Crockett would agree, yep. it would be the largest typical buck ever. And I would bet it'd be a long time before we see that record break. Um, I, I don't think we would see it in our lifetimes. And if we did, it would be I mean, Hanson's, just like this deer. Hanson's you know, I mean, has sat since, what, 93? Yep. As the world record net. I believe Huff, uh, when he killed his deer, they said on one of the interviews, they said the chances of him killing that deer was one in 500 million, I believe. Wow. I'm quoting that correctly. Powerball would have been cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, because what, I don't know. Nick, what did uh, Huff's buck gross? Can you see? I bet he was in the 220s. It says that the Huff buck grossed 213 and an eighth and netted 208 and a half. So very little deduction. Yeah. Mm. That, and that's insane on its own as a typical. I mean, that's as symmetrical as you get. Yep. And it was a mainframe 12 too. Yep. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, obviously the Huff buck is, Dustin's buck is giant. But it only grossed 213. We're looking at a gross 230 typical. <laughs> That's th- like hard to fathom. Yep. My brain like doesn't know what to do with it. That's okay, like, so here you as go. As I'm looking at it, just like. So, so Milo. Yeah, dude, it's insane. Milo's it's, buck, which he probably doesn't listen. Milo follows our podcast, which is kind of funny. Does he? Yeah. Hey, hey Nick, can you grab uh, Wide Boy out of there? Yeah, I just want to compare the math. So Milo's buck, which is the world record typical, killed in ninety three, netted two thirteen and five eighths. It grossed two twenty three and seven eighths. So this deer is easily, if scored as a typical, absolutely some, almost ten it. almost ten inches bigger. Gross. Absolutely crushes it. That's freaking mind blowing. How many deer have been killed in the last thirty plus years? And this thing's this is like one of those things that's just like. It, it doesn't even break the record. It just no. smashes it. Uh, Jeremy's one he stuck in the shoulder a couple of years ago. It's got eight up a little it's bit. It's the other real massive one in there. Not that one by on the chair, but. That uh, shed that I brought in to show you guys, that uh, deer. I measured that shed, and I believe it's 86 and 5 eighths. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I was trying to give them boys the backstory to it, and I completely butchered it, so you may have to tell them. Um, Which this is also a magnum, but look at that. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Like, I mean, it's I just, got great it's, times, but like. Makes you want to quit. It, like, what? why would I yeah, never going to kill anything like oh that? Oh, my God. This is a 180 I, I stuck so in the shoulder. It's like a baby. It's an infant. What? And that's an absolute stud of a deer right there. It, it is. You know, you know what I mean? I mean, that is a 180 inch deer. Anybody in the world would be and what what great why to kill just that. why that's a ten inch that's a ten year old deer yeah and that's the biggest rack he ever threw what what causes a deer to throw an antler like it, that Jeanette I mean I look at Ronnie Coleman for example yeah I mean that is a Ronnie Coleman yeah, of a buck if I've ever seen one of bodybuilding you know just right genetics he picked the right thing to do mm-hmm. you know it was just I have to name him yeah buddy yeah buddy <laughs> yeah like wait. <laughs> 
I would assume that this deer probably didn't didn't breed as hard. He had something happen that he retained resources from the year before. Yep. There's no other reason to the throw. Previous five years. But but the thing is, is year. like we don't you don't know, right? With no history and nobody seeing this thing. We don't know that three years old, this deer could and, add a 200-inch frame. And that's really where the mysteries lie. And wait, I mean, we've talked about it for Where's hours this deer been for five years? Yep. We've talked about it for hours on end at this point. You know, Sitting in the pond with one of those cattails. just <laughs> Dude, I can't believe that nobody has come out of the woodwork yet. Yeah. I honestly should go by. There's no the way. There, yeah, 100%. There's got to be yet. some person. Somebody's seen. Whether it. I just hope they don't shoot me. Whether it's an old man that's using ancient trail cameras or no whatever, trail cameras at or all. no trail cameras at all, and he's seen it with his own eyes and just knows it's back there. I mean, has your uh, brother-in-law got anything on camera yet? Uh, I don't believe so. A um, <laughs> couple <of> does. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he brought it. Spots. You gotta tell me, like, dude, I killed it. It's gone. <laughs> it's, uh, the, the Fusion X is that a yeah? It's Stealth Cam. Stealth Cam. Yeah, he got one of those, and he was asking me about the SD card. He said, "Why ain't it picking up this SD card?" I said, "You need a special SD card." He's like, "Well, hell." So I'm not even. No, you don't. No, it's not picking up the SD card. Yeah, like I think he's got a regular. You know how cell cameras need that one? No, no, they'll take any cell cam. Yeah. Really? They perform better with a, you know, a yeah. higher I mean, if higher it's end. if it's a super old one, something wrong with it the probably SD won't work. I would think. Well, it has to be a minimum of sixteen gigs. So if it's not a minimum, it? then it won't work. No, you, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think oh, there's I a minimum so, on them. I've used like eight. I've really? Eight. Yeah, I think on so. on the new ones. Yeah. Huh? I'm not sure. I think I'm pretty sure. Now I'm gonna have to figure that mystery out. I I check out SD. I'd be interested to see. I bet there's. Not this. SD cards go bad. Yeah. Uh, but I bet there's a big buck in there. Why do you think? moved in. Oh, maybe. maybe. Offspring. Maybe. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> it's, obviously, I mean, it's obviously a good area. I mean, clearly, I mean, the, clearly the biggest buck that's been killed in the county, because we're talking about something it being a figured state out, Something figured out how to get old there. So, I mean, it, it, it likely will happen again <laughs> at some point. Yep. And, well, and that's what I told them. I was like, obviously, the genetics are there. The food's there. <laughs> There's Clearly. no way there, this deer was going very far. Or, yeah. like we said, somebody would have come out about it already. Because, I mean, it's he's just atrocious just to lo even look at in person. I Probably jumped off a bridge, anybody that had pictures of it. When oh, I got yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah, he <laughs> just went out laid on the highway. <laughs> editing it up. I mean, the thing is, is, like, you see some of these bucks. Like, we looked at, like, the Illinois buck or the Tennessee buck, like, they have some sort of injury that causes them to throw an absurd amount of non-typical points, which has them score high. Yep. I don't think that that's a genetic throw. I think that's an injury. A hundred percent. Pedicles, whatever. Yep. This deer has a like one in a trillion genetic frame potential on them. Like I would assume, even in years past, he has thrown a large, massive set of antlers. Now, maybe you, not to this. Do you boys think next year? He would have went downhill. I think at any Hard moment he could have went downhill. Yeah, that's why I started to say. Well, I mean, what do you think? You think he's going to shrink Honestly, thirty inches? I think it depends in a year? on the reese, like from year to year. Like if you have tough winter, like shortage of food, Get whatever that injuries is. And injuries, injuries like for sure. How hard he rut? At some point, though, I mean, if he's let's say he is seven and a half at eight and a half, I mean, Honest, an eight and a half year old deer in the wild is struggle bussing. The way he moved, I've never seen a deer so meticulous and so slow. Even, at, I mean, November 9th. He's Ohio. just picking everything apart. Yes. Like, dude, you, but it, this is usually like the biggest shed on our table. That's what I'm saying, dude. It's not even the same animal. Yeah. I'm not it may, right, it literally makes that antler look like an infant. Yeah, I'm like, is this a two-year-old? <laughs> Boy. <laughs> sure puts that in perspective, doesn't it? It can happen. Next year will be interesting. Yeah, no shit. I dude. know, man. I almost feel bad for you in that regard. Like, where do you go from here? My dad shot 162 inch eight point last. I mean, big, nice eight point. And he's like Lee Likoski all of a sudden. He's like, you're passing all these four year olds <laughs> left and right. Like, he's like, I'm, I'm 160 nope. or better. And I'm like, you could be waiting for a while. Yeah. Nope. I don't think you're going 230 or better typical. You're in trouble. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Yeah. I don't He'll know. He'll be dude. shooting a 140 next year, boys. Don't let him gaslight you. Well, yeah. you should. You know, you can't let this, you know. Well, no, a, because you wouldn't ever kill dent. anything That's again. That's it, man. You wouldn't enjoy it. If you put the pressure on, like, oh, I got to do, I, I'm going to live up to this hype, like, that would not be healthy for That's you. a seriously, like, you should talk to some guys about that. Like, that's, you know, almost like the celebrity, like, that gets to, like, you're almost on an island. Like, nobody yeah. can relate. I could never 
even no. talk to you about killing a deer like that because it's like I don't even know. Oh. I don't even know what I would do if I killed a deer like that. I don't. I mean, I want to believe I would just I'd keep deer hunting, be on to the next one. But like, how do you? Like, that's got to change you. Weirdly enough, it's I've been going crazy not being sitting out there so i told her i was like look we got to get you out there we gotta go do something i'm <laughs> well, ready to go sit again <laughs> and at the end of the day that's the best thing you can do it yeah. shows people that you know it's not all just about that yeah. big rack right there my it's about getting out there my 115 inch do. deer that i killed last year uh controversial to say but i'm just as proud i really am sure i mean there's just oh no i just love it man just love it, it. it's an amazing animal though and i you know it's more about that i think it's more like a hundred percent it's just like in awe of the animal like yeah. how the fact that he lived however long he did and grew an antlers literally potential world record ant like that's the king it, of the forest right there yeah. yeah that's bambi's dad imagine what he's seen in his life that's what i was thinking man oh he's a warrior i guarantee it what this deer has gone through and yeah, like you said, how he moves just so meticulous through the woods. That deer was smart as shit. Yep. You think he was living in that block of woods or? Honestly, I think I do because as meticulous and stuff as he was moving, as much attention he was paying, he had no idea I was there. No idea. He just thought this was his living room and he yeah. there nothing out of place. Yeah. And he was following that doe, right? He was he was kinda on her like I from a distance. I believe he's probably been with her for a minute. Yep. And just Yeah, but weird that she had a watching. button buck with her. Because like if she was an Estra, she's kicking that button buck out. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. Like if she was if she was receptive, yep. ready. He's just waiting. He I I think that dude was biding his time. He knew eventually. And who else is she gonna go with? <laughs> yeah, look at me. Look at me. Like, wait. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we let you go, because I know you mentioned it, I'm just in. You know, just curious. You said, uh, oh, an Ohio DNR officer. Yes. And you went back out. Absolutely. How did that all? What What all happened there? Um, I changed cell phone numbers a lot, like mm -hmm. pants. Mm -hmm. I'm horrible with phones. Burners. <laughs> we yes. get it. <laughs> yes. Um, and my mom's number was actually on my because I had like the digital thing on my app. Yep. yep. Um, he called her said hey we heard you killed a big deer and she's like no i didn't my son did but i can get you in contact with him so uh he calls and she comes up to tell me and i'm in i'm so hard to wake up in the morning but she's sitting there trying to wake me up she said cj odnr called you and i'm just in there shit what <laughs> run scatter <laughs> <laughs> and i end up falling asleep for another 40 minutes and uh our five-year-old son was in there um i believe he's playing xbox or something but i end up waking up i said zayden Go get your mom. And he's like, okay. And walks down there and she comes up. She's like, yeah. I said, did you say an ODNR officer called? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. I said, like, give me the phone. I'll call him. And he showed up at the house probably 20 minutes after we got off the phone. Sat there and talked to him for about 40 minutes. Just asked me the story and stuff like that. And he said, what are your plans today? And I said, well, Mike Rex is coming to uh, green score it. And he said, do you know what time? And I said, probably about 3 o'clock. And he said, do you have time to run out there? I said, yeah. Let's go. So uh, we loaded up. He followed me. We get to the property, and as I'm pulling up, I see my sister's mom walking out on the porch to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, this is going to go lovely. This is going to go fun. Yeah. But uh, I park in front of the barn, and uh, he parks kind of down on the driveway, and he walks up to her, kind of just say hi, and said, hey, he shot a deer. I'm just here to check stuff out. And I got out of the car, and she's like, I don't even know who the hell that is. Jesus. And uh I said what I said, and he kind of looked at her and was like, and walked back over to me, and he said, what's her problem? I was like, gosh, she's not a big fan of me. Was there any, like, discrepancy with it? Like, did he dispute your permission at any point? Or um, I showed him the permission slip at the house that my sister had signed October 1st, and I told him, I said, do you need to make a copy? And do they take own a picture? it, like, equally? How does that work? Um, Before this house thing started, it was her mom's. It was primarily Jeannie's. Um, but in order for her to get the loan for that place to be put there, she had to be on, on the, the land. deed. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so she's at least got authority. Yes. To give permission. Permission. Yep. And, um, he, uh, pulled up his Onyx actually, obviously though DNR officers, they have paid Onyx. It's mm -hmm. like, it just says Jeannie Alexander. And then I told him the whole thing about the house and he said, okay. He said, well, I'll probably talk to her when we leave. And he said, well, I've talked to your sister. And I said, yeah, yeah. that's fine. Um, 
because they were getting ready to move in, they actually bush hogged all that, most of that stuff down. Like the last, I'd say where the ponds start back Mm -hmm. is still that tall stuff, but the other stuff. Where you killed him. Yes. But with the other stuff, I mean, it's gone and it was like, you would not want to go through. Was it it thick when he, when you killed him? Yes. So it was literally days after they, wow. Yep. Could have changed his whole pattern, dude. Yeah, yeah. Probably could've, may could've not ever pushed him, seen him again. Pushed him out of the area. From where he sat so <laughs> long, um, his carcass was still on the property because the horrible shot. It was pretty warm that day, yep. pretty warm that night. And I got probably a third of what I should have got off of him, mm-hmm. which is unfortunate. But Was the cape salvageable? Yes, yes. Um, still good? Not yep, slipping or anything? Not slipping or nothing, nope. Um I kept his cape and stuff on ice that night after I had caped him out. So um, the only bad thing I did is the ice melted a little bit because I had it locked in my house. A little water on and a cape. Heat, yeah. My tax was like, never do that again, please. Yeah. Um, you just put, you didn't have it in a garbage bag or anything? Uh, no. Uh, yeah. just that's, a, that's a no-no. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get them warm or wet. Yeah. Um, but we walked out there. I said, there's the carcass right there. If you want to go look at it, you can see the entrance. You can see the exit. If you don't want to touch it, I'll touch it. And he said, no, I'm not, I'm not even worried about that. We walked down the edge. And he said, where were you? I said, that tree right there. I said, if you want to, you can literally see where the climber went up the tree, the marks on the tree. He said, about where did you shoot him? And I said, you see that log right there? He said, right there. So he's like, let's walk, walk this trail. We did not find any blood, which it had been six days i think yeah so it was probably yeah gone um gut pile i got him right there by the pond the gut pile was gone then you got that thing uh <laughs> but uh coyote said done ate it up oh sure but actually where he was dead where he actually we found him dead um i thought it was just like a dark mark in the grass but i said i'm pretty sure and i stuck my finger in it it's and blood blood right there and he said okay like obviously I see everything I need to see when we walked out. Um, I mean, what was he looking for? Honestly, probably just checking to see, like, it's not like next hunting spot. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's just weird because, like, uh, let's say I kill a 150, he's not coming out to check my spot that thorough. I think what it was (laughs) is because of the attention that these kind of deer can get Mm -hmm. and people saying things because I've actually heard people. Who have heard people around town in Wilmington saying that is a high fence deer? Like here in Clinton sure. County, they let out like three or four of them Didn't a few years back. Somebody want to say that you spotlighted this deer? Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, someone said I spotlighted it, and I was like, well, I must have climbed up a telephone pole because <laughs> if you look at the entrance and exit, that yeah. would make no sense at all. <laughs> yeah. Um. But he was looking for a blood trail and just trying to trying get to get the put consistency all the with together. the story. Yeah. But um. He wanted to talk to my buddy Corey. He talked to him. Uh, he Corey called him that night, but I think he didn't call him back until the next morning. But he was just trying to put the because he knew this thing's gonna get a shitload. Pretty of Pretty much to protect me. Like yeah. if anything says anything, hey, we he's went. like we I was out there. I saw finished. it all, and it actually rained the next day, so it worked out honestly, probably in my benefit. And Mike said that he did reach out to someone because of who my dad was, where I grew up, and stuff. He said, just go ahead. Get it out there. There's no reason to hide it. There was nothing that was done wrong. Because people are going to dig. 100%. Absolutely. They're just going to look for reasons. Yep. So. Isn't that a shame? Well, yeah. they do. Dude, even when I killed that deer, I mean, instantly people are like, oh, he obviously shot it. Like, in no, because it was in stuff. velvet. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, people just jump to conclusions. Uh, it's some of the most embracing people you can be around, but when people get jealous... I think it's a little different when it's this caliber of a deer. Yeah. And to me, there's no reason to be ju- – I, I got lucky. Well, I mean – In the end, I got lucky. People are going to try to take advantage of the situation with you on it. Is yeah. what, what happens is, like, because you're, quote, the average hunter, yep. right, they're going to be like, all right, this guy doesn't know anything about the industry, doesn't know about this, I'm going to throw him 5,000 here, I'm going to throw 1,000 here, I'm going to do this. And that that's, you know, they're going to look to take advantage of the situation. Absolutely. Um. And it's because that they know that this thing is going to hold a lot of value and notoriety for possibly the rest of our lives if there's never a bigger typical ever killed. It seems like everyone's trying to rush me on a decision of getting rid of it and stuff before Why? the score and stuff. Because basically the conversation I had with someone, um, 
that if this deer is not scored as a typical or not scored at all, the value is less. But if it scores Ohio big buck, 200 plus typical, how many? I mean, it's the only the third in Ohio that would be 200 on I the mean, books. I mean, dude, there would be the state record. So that enormously kicks the value up. And then with his growth score, you can certainly make the argument that it was possibly the biggest, the biggest typical. typical ever to walk the earth. So, I mean, I think that um, regardless of who says what about score, from a hunter perspective, it's the biggest typical yeah. that's ever been killed in the wild. Yeah. Possibly to ever walk in the wild. And, like, I appreciate their, like, offers and, like, wanting to represent me and make me money and stuff. But for me, man, that's not what it's about. And that's why I reached out to you. I feel like you guys are genuine people. That's the vibe I get. So, this is what I want this deer to represent us. Like, the everyday person. Like, keep going, keep dreaming. You never know what might happen, man. It's nuts, dude. I mean, it it is... Uh, to me, don't get me wrong, the inches are cool and stuff, but, for example, what Jared shared um, with me, what he did with his dad while you guys were in Illinois, that's just a special. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't be discredited at all, and to that, that should mean more to you probably than that deer means to me, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, I would give anything to have a... Uh, shoot a doe with my dad i'm yeah. never even i've went hunting with him once in my life yeah didn't even see a deer yeah so yeah it's wild man because you get into that side of things and whether it's you know your dad or your kids or whatever there's you know uh, i'm sure you personally the memory of this deer won't fade you yeah. know that hunt won't fade but uh, for the people around you it will yep that's just the reality <laughs> of it you know at, at some point people will forget yep. you know and things will happen and but there's other things that that happen during a hunt that are like, you know, maybe way less successful, but are very memorable. Yep. Um, you know, and it's I think the biggest thing, and I'm, you know, in a weird way, I'm I'm glad somebody like you shot this deer because there are plenty of people who would look to, you know, monetize this thing, abuse what is, you can't say is anything less than like one of the most magnificent animals I've ever seen. Yeah. Like it's just unfreaking believable i really don't think you could have said that any better because i mean even even looking at it i know you guys have looked at it for a while now but i've seen this deer i've looked at it more times than i've looked at any deer and it's still just it just it, it's mind-boggling it's really my, mind-boggling it almost looks pre yes. prehistoric dude 100%. like it looks like somebody yeah. fa- found this thing like fossilized and like holy shit this is what white what deer used, used to look, look like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's unbelievable that that thing walked and i can just like you like you describing how it comes i could just watch like visualize this deer like meticulously picking apart the landscape Absolutely. on every move and it's yeah. just like Watching every that's, single step. That's every why he noise. is what he is, man. Yep. Yeah, what an unbelievable animal. I can't. I can't imagine that thing walking through the woods. I just. I guarantee you when does, he shed it. does seem real to me. Shed his horns every year. I bet you he felt such a nice oh, relief. Oh, I can't believe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he said, man. Oh, uh, yeah. And I mean, there's a, there again, I can't, you know, I know shed hunting's not that popular, but nobody found those. Yep. Like there's probably there's there a good be, chance there's a hundred inch side out there yeah. somewhere and you, you know? would assume even like me I've found in the past two years I would say I've walked over forty miles I found maybe five sheds and a lot of them old chewed up sheds sure um, a side like that laying on the ground say a stick out pretty good yeah you're not gonna miss Dude, that. since you're getting into shed hunting grab them two sorry Nick grab grab them two old chewed up ones the old Kansas eights. these are really cool these are I mean, as chewed up as they come, I guess. But these were... The, uh, They're on public. These were 50 yards, 100 yards at most off of a, the parking spot out of high traffic really? area in Kansas. See, I think that's the next, yeah, just those two next, next. adventure. It, yeah, I mean, I guess right, I should yeah. bring them out after this thing. But, like, Shut grab a hold of them. Wow. It's a That's a match set. I mean, that is... Yeah, I mean that is just even the mass. Here, let me see them both. I'll show you what this deer was. Look at, I mean, that's what that sucker was. I mean, that's and that's an absolute stud. Probably a one eighty eight point is what that sucker was. At least, yeah, he was on public land. Those are probably two years old. I I made a mistake bringing them out next to your deer. I'm realizing now, (laughs) but but yeah, I mean, just grab on to like it's just the mass on that thing. I I didn't even know they were antlers at first. I was like, oh, there's a log laying there. 
Yep. They had some character on them, too. They, 100%. They exist out there, man. It's just uh, they're rare. Well, that and hoping that they don't die of old age or natural causes or get hit by a car before a hunter or somebody can even see the deer. Well, as I say, that's the reality is in in a, in in my mind, in a normal world, and why this isn't a normal world, I don't know. In a normal world, this deer is monitored or seen by many different hunters yeah. who chase this buck for several years, and then somehow the deer ends up dying, EHD, car, whatever, and nobody gets them. Yep. The, the mystery is how nobody was chasing this deer and your first hunt there, he comes through like it maybe in like the, the seventies or eighties and nineties, like that could have possibly happened. But with how much technology is used in hunting now, it seems almost mind blowing that that's, that's the case. Like, I don't understand how that's yeah. even possible, but it is, which is what makes it cool. Man, trust me, I'd love to have cell cameras riddled everywhere, but it's just so expensive. Clearly, like, you don't need them. My buddy, Corey. <laughs> Not believe, for this one, anyway. <laughs> I believe he runs 10 or 11 tactic camps. And mm -hmm. He's told me before what he pays for that yeah, month. Dumb. And not even counting batteries. Yeah, it's dumb. Don't. Yeah. My we fiance would have ran me over with a car. She'd be like, you're broke, and you ain't spending all my money on that. <laughs> I love you, but that's not happening. I write it off as a business expense. <laughs> Boy. That's a good day I, right I there. do want to ask you. I don't know if you're feeling it yet, but like after I shoot a buck like that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you feel any sense of uh, like almost like hangover after the excitement of shooting a deer mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. My, mine usually is just the few days following, like because the, the night of and even the next morning and stuff, it's like my adrenaline is still good, even though I have some caping them out. But then, like, as we start to pull out of camp or whatever, I'm like, my, the excitement starts to come down. It's like you almost hit like a low point. I'm almost exhausted by the, by the, all the excitement, you know? These past 10 days is probably what you've, we've been friends since I was, what, seven years? We'll say yeah. seven years. For, this is the busiest I've been in seven years. In just these 10 days. Like, I do not enjoy talking on the phone. Man, it, it's insane. The time. Just the attention. Yeah. that It, it was all at once. And because it went from me posting it on Tennessee Deer Hunters yep. to you getting messaged by, you know, everybody. Yeah. And then uh, my fiance, she uh, posted it. And then Ohio Trophy Bucks asked it to post it. And then... From there, below. I've seen it. Now I just look in my sense. search and yeah, Bo there, junkies post. There I am. So who, who's like, who's calling you, CJ? Um, like, I've talked to you guys. I've talked to clearly, uh, yeah, <laughs> North American Whitetail, right? North American yep. Whitetail. Um, two different dudes. Um, Clifford Neems. I uh, I hope I'm not butchering his last name. Um, Sorry, Clifford. Yeah, Haynes Shelton. Yeah, uh, I've been in contact with him. Outdoor Life, mm -hmm. their magazine. Yeah. Real tree. Yep. Um, Tyler Jordan actually commented. Tyler, um, Tyler, Dave, Tyler's probably watching the show right. David now. Blanton was supposed to come on tomorrow. We you know have to push him a little bit, but but uh, I'm in hot. He uh, com <laughs> commented on my uh, Instagram post of me with the deer, and I was just absolutely floored. Uh, I was dude. telling her, I was like, "Do you know who this is?" Ty <laughs> Tyler's a good dude. Yes. Yeah. It's literally just antler collectors, um, magazines. Honestly, you guys are the only podcast that yeah. has actually re reached out to me so far. Or I reached out to you technically, but um, yes, there's a dude in Columbus. He owns a big archery shop. Uh, one of the biggest archery shops in Columbus, he said. I can't remember the name, but uh, he's got a new technology. And Oh, yeah, this would be really good. For uh, replicas. This would be yes. very good. Basically, an eye. That's the dude that came out and did all Ben's replicas, like for insurance purposes. I'm thinking possibly, probably. Yes. Oh, okay. Scan it. Put you it know in what's a really cloud. cool is they make like mini replicas, which I think is really no cool. way. We, yes, we if it's the same you can company. Have a little bobblehead on yeah. your oh, dashboard. I'm getting a Megatron that. bobblehead. I want one too. You better send us one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I asked him, or she asked him, how much it was, and he said typically it's a hundred dollars an animal, and he said, but um, something about it's dropping in two or three weeks, and they want to use this as like a showcase, basically. Yeah, yeah. So they'll do it for free. Yeah. But he showed us a whiskey bottle cork. It had a 300-inch elk on top of the whiskey bottle oh, cork. Because they were able to etch it in and, and stuff. perfect, like, That's very cool. exactly like the animal. That yeah. is so awesome. And then if anything happens, God forbid. You someone, have a replica, yeah, base. Yeah. 
Everybody's going to be rocking the Alexander buck here for Christmas. Yeah. It's got a nice ring to it. Oh, yeah, the there Alexander you go. Buck. That's freaking awesome. Oh, that's awesome. That yeah. Is, that's sweet. Yeah. On the old decanter, huh? Yeah. That's crazy, Buddy. man. That's um, it's as big as we thought it was. I want one. <laughs> I want one of these. <laughs> Well, I hope for both of you guys get a chance to. They don't make them like that, brother. I just, uh, I don't, again, I think there's some divine intervention on that 100%, one. hundred percent. I agree with that. They just, uh, they do not walk the face of the earth like that very often. Like they I just told killed, them. what'd they kill, uh, would Mick send us in Kansas? 260. I mean, you get a deer to come, you get a 140 inch buck to come in seven yards of you. You're, I mean... Yeah, I, I mean, know for a fact my heart's dropping, but that's me. But if I were to see this, I would honestly probably have a heart attack. I, prob the, I probably wouldn't make it back. That's the 260 they just killed that in Kansas. That is insane. Wow. Crazy. Honestly, when people Mega see it for the drop. first time and I see their excitement and stuff, it literally it is like an epiphany going back to when I seen him for the first time. I can't imagine, dude. That's, that's the moment like I'm trying to visualize. Sweating turning around and seeing this thing or hearing him grunt like the vocalizations and then seeing that deer come in i just i wouldn't even know what i'm looking at cried like a baby it's hard oh, to I say it. like i want to think i would just kill it like any other deer like i obviously would be aware honestly if you want me to be honest with you i bet you would yeah, I bet you would. Because I shut it off. I try. I don't really. Don't not really pay attention. Off. Yeah, I've, go on to kill mode. But I've how do you turn that decent, off? I mean, <laughs> I've killed a few decent, de respectable deer, especially for that area, but no giants by any means. But I knew when he was walking. Obviously, when I shot him, I wasn't so sure that I, <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I wasn't confident yeah, in what I was sick, thinking. That's but, a sick feeling. But I was like, he's dead, hundred percent. This deer, he's dead. And then I seen the shot, and I was just like, I'm mm. never going to see that deer again, and no one's going to believe me. Just like that alone. Well, even that, man. I mean, like, talk about all the stars aligning, like, clearly not the greatest shot, and, like, that deer is dead. Worst shot I've ever made on a deer. I you normally, every deer I've shot with a bow, I have either watched fall or heard fall. Do you think, would you would you have done anything differently with a vertical bow in terms of, like, letting him get past you? Or? I probably... Because you shot him, what, standing still at yeah. quartering to you at seven yards? Yep. And what was he doing? Did He he probably picked your wind up at uh, that point. Uh, my wind was actually blowing the complete opposite way of where he yeah, was Yeah, but going. at seven yards, I yeah, mean. It was blowing. So if I'm in the tree, obviously, like, this is a stand. It's blowing this way, and he's coming from this way. Yeah. So uh, he had his head down yeah. looking at the doe. Yeah. So just kind of checking out what she was doing. And you just couldn't wait anymore. You're like, no. Yeah. No. That, I got to shoot him. That's seven a, yards. That's a clear opening. I was pretty confident that it would blast through both shoulders sure. at that close. Sure. And if not with that angle, I was thinking maybe even heart. Yeah. And then he's. I've shot him at, yeah, right quarter to me at five, seven yards. Yeah. With, same thing. With a vertical bow. Probably do the same thing. Just draw and shoot him right in the shoulder. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I. Honestly, depending on the poundage and stuff, I used to shoot 70 pounds, and I'm about a 28 and a half inch draw. Depends mm -hmm. on the brand. But uh, I probably would have aimed a little further back just to stay away from that shoulder, which I typically like to shoot an arrow that's got a decent FOC. Mm -hmm. But uh, the shoulder just worries me. Because first sure. arrow I ever shot with a bow – they messed up the bow yeah. when we ordered it. This it was right 25 here. inches. This is a shed off of deer. Jer Jeremy shot at this year. Yes. In the shoulder. I hit that deer in the shoulder, and the arrow literally went in that far. So it did on that she ran 400 yards, and I'm just waiting for her to fall. And my cousin Brandon's like, no, man. I put that, I put that broadhead right down. into the knuckle of that femur on this deer, and it hurt him. I not, thought, didn't kill him. I thought about asking Nick to set me up with a 90-pound bow next year. <laughs> I would like to draw an <laughs> just eight, for fun an eighty back. You could draw it easily. I mean, I've got two eighties. So I, I know not that's here, what you shoot. Um, oh, you definitely could do it. Dude, these new, so these new, uh, you know, them Hoyt cams and stuff. They actually on the new one they just released. It's got quarter inch draw increments too, yeah. doesn't it? Oh, it's even less, which I wouldn't go for. It's got seventy five, eighty, and eighty five pounds. I've mm -hmm. got an eighty five or or per percent rather percent yeah. let off. Yep. So I've got eighty pounds at eighty five percent let off, and yeah. it's it's not. I mean. No, it's humping over. The only thing I would worry about is, say, you get into late season in Ohio, say, 
bad storm hits, you're mm -hmm. all balked up and stuff, depending on what you're hunting out of. If you're in a tree stand, yeah. getting cold, stuff getting tight. But Well, the, the two things that I worry me about high poundage are um, you can't hold it as long. Yep. And ultimately target panic yep. you know if, if it's getting away from you yeah it's it just creates a situation mm -hmm. where you're not comfortable 100 percent. so that's yeah. how i got target panic to begin with i shot a bow that was too heavy and somehow i adapted to it i mean i changed the release changed mm -hmm. retrained myself and stuff but it was i was shooting too much poundage yeah well this year i didn't my arrows weren't built like we built our arrows now when i yeah. shot yeah, this yeah. Deer. i was sure. light light and Fast. That eight, I hear that thing sizzling. That mm -hmm. eight point I shot in Illinois on the same night you shot this one. Dude, within an hour, I have shot that buck probably. Of that's this crazy. One. And uh, I shot him right in the shoulder. And honestly, I think that's sever. They're built to pivot. Mm -hmm. Some guys, you know, think that's a, a potential flaw. Smaller like, wound channel, but it, it pops, it pivots, and then it <clears throat> pops right back when it has right. a chance to move. So, so they, they're built to, they go like this. But Basically ideally. swerving around. Uh-huh. And so I hit that thing. It literally... I mean, it was touching the the femur, you know, so the shoulder blade is connected yep. basically mm -hmm. to the femur. So I, I, and he was broadside to me. I just, that's where I hold, that's where I shoot him. Yep. But right again, I'm shooting pocket. 80 pounds with a, I mean, do you, <laughs> 500 grain. Do you think that you hit the femoral or just got shot? Uh, no, I definitely think I hit the femoral artery or, and so he just slow bled out. Yeah. Cause where he did die. Even after the six or seven days, there was still, I mean, a pretty good puddle of blood right Show there. Show them that picture of that arrow if you haven't already. Yeah, no, I haven't. Hmm. Because the blood resembles like if you were to hit a double lung. One, or yeah, because it, it's, I mean, the artery I, would be oxygenated. That's definitely what, because that's what I told him. Whenever he showed me the arrow, I was like, dude, that deer's dead. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know where, but he's dead. No yeah. matter how bad of a he shot you He hit oxygenated made. blood. So you're in good shape. Yeah. And then here's this. I mean, it did the trick, I guess. Yeah. But it looks like a old G5 Montec. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of, for sure. Mm. Yep. Well, we appreciate you guys coming down and being in person with us on this oh, thing. Oh, it's absolutely our pleasure. Our, our pleasure, for <laughs> sure. I appreciate it, Browns. It's uh, cool to me that you guys think it's cool to be here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm fanboy. Oh, me too. <laughs> me too. We were in Kansas and we're, we're, like, we're like, we should get them to come into the podcast. Mm -hmm. That'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. Not and, that far. Um, it really wasn't a bad drive. No, not at really, all. Really, honestly, well, you got to drive through. back. Yeah. yeah, that's what sucks. Yeah, <laughs> you crash on the couches out there if you want. Yeah, don't tempt us. I know you got some meal prep enough for it. I've seen the instant rise. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah, we, we appreciate you coming in, and what a what a just unreal deer. I mean, this is, you know, it's what people dream of. People always say, oh, you know, I don't care about a buck. Please, dude, you sit there and daydream <laughs> about big bucks coming over the hill every time. I hate Who being cold, yeah. and I'll tell you what, all the times I've been freezing cold and came back and said I'm never hunting again, I'm glad I never stuck to that. Did you yeah. did you, uh, did you get the shakes after that that bolt was sent? Oh yeah, yeah. I thought I was gonna throw up. Yeah, especially not having anyone to tell. Oh yeah, because you had no phone, no nothing. Yeah, you just had to keep it. Yeah, literally just sitting there, hitting oh, the tree wow. with the back of my head, <laughs> like it's done. Like that deer, especially him not sprinting like that, which the tail tuck and the hunch over, kind of gave me a little glimmer of hope, but still. Can't imagine though the the sight of him on the ground though what that was like. I I just can't oh, believe I how pathetic all these horns like. I keep bringing them out and I'm like, oh, that's that's a good one, you know. I'm like, it's just like a, it's they're nothing. <laughs> no, I mean it's like I mean, that's yeah, dude, even the mass that's on this impressive. deer. It's I like mean, cool. I'm gonna go kill a booner that. now. Yeah. What? <laughs> I mean, you don't see that in deer. It's just. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I would say that there's something in the, that area, though. I would, I mean, yes, he's uh, way off of the charts as a rarity, but I would assume that there probably is the right genes and body in that space to to produce big boy. Uh, well, do, do you have, are you like going to post updates or anything like on your social medias or something that you want to share with people that like they can follow along or? Absolutely. Um, my Instagram, CJ Alexander 55. If they want to follow there, that's basic, basically my main social media. Like, I, I mean, I use my Snapchat, too, but I'm not giving my personal Snapchat out. <laughs> um, Why don't you just change the name to the Alexander Buck, and that can be your the page. Hey, now. Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely what we you should do. We've talked so. about uh, 
a YouTube channel, honestly. Um, killing one on video, I think that would be cool. Um, it's not easy. No. Yeah, that that no. makes a whole nother challenge yeah. to the whole. It's not easy. But um, his Facebook, Heath Davidson, mm -hmm. or my fiance's, Carissa Weisenberger, and um, we'll post stuff as we go. So what's next steps now? Like, are we just in hold pattern till drying period? Um, I assume the next thing is talk to Hen Shelton, get that all worked out, mm -hmm. get him on the cover of North American Whitetail. Mm -hmm. There's a few other magazines that said they would still want to maybe do it after. Yep. See what they got He's to getting say. the first crack. Yep. Uh, I told him, sense. yeah, Clifford got a hold of Heath. Within, oh, dude, within, not even not even an hour yeah. after the post was made. He was like, uh, I heard your brother killed this. Who was this? You know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I, I don't even, know. I, I don't know if he's wanting like, to talk to anybody. I didn't even call him for like two days. And well, he kept messaging him. He's like, please, man, just call this guy. Yeah. So I called him and I was like, I don't even know if this is legit. I don't even know who to ask if this is legit. Yeah. Like, this could be a dude. He's a writer. Yeah. And he then, just wants to cover a story. Um. Then he got me in contact with Haynes. Yep. Shelton. Um, and basically, I gave Clifford the my word that they would be the ones to do it first. And it's the right magazine for it. Yes. So basically, that's how it's going to go. Um, they'll they'll do it first, and whoever reaches out to me after that, I mean, that's how I'm just going to try to navigate this, not try to pull myself in too many directions. Like, no, nah, just I mean, all they want to hear is your story. <laughs> yeah. You know, let them let let yourself tell the story, and they'll write it up. Yep. Um, They'll do a good job with it. If anyone wants to message me on Instagram or anything like that, wants pictures, yeah. go ahead and shoot it. If I look at it all the time. When I get to it, I'll respond to you and talk to you about it. There'll probably be companies that want to work with you and figure out partnerships. Yep. Yeah. Have, have it in the <laughs> yeah, have it in the booth. Yeah. Well, we'll be following along here over the, the next few weeks and months to, to see what this happens. But in my book, that's I think we're looking at the biggest typical buck we'll probably ever see. So Pretty impressive. Appreciate it, boys. All right. Appreciate everybody listening to episode 158 with the Alexander Buck coined here. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Later. It take me... Oh.